we went into it with no experience uh, in television whatsoever and, and, uh, and made a tremendous number of mistakes for the first year. I mean, still make mistakes every year, but I think, um, but you know, hopefully learning as we go and, and uh, improving things. But we just didn't have any production experience, so we came in kind of knowing how we wanted to write it, but not knowing anything about the casting process, the editing process, working with visual effects, working with a production designer, all that stuff that you need to know. And it's been a, a steep learning curve. They would get behind a project and they would give it a solid commitment. We'd never produced anything for television before. We'd never produced anything for film or internet or, or anything. We'd written before, but we never produced. So when we went to George, probably it was kind of like, it was probably like that bluff where you mistakenly think you have a straight and you actually don't. But we were so confident <laughs> that, that I think we convinced George that, well, these guys seem like they really know what they're doing. I said, I want it done. I want a faithful adaptation of the books. And they said, that's what we want to do. That never gets old, does it? Never gets old. Uh... Well, anyway, allow me to welcome my lovely guests. Please welcome. everyone no that never ever gets old yeah <sighs> yeah um yeah it's gonna be interesting also welcome the current wolf lord of the space wolves is logan grimnar also known as the old wolf he rules from the hall of the great wolf together with his wolf lords such as herald death wolf eagle iron wolf and bajorn storm wolf all I got out of that was wolf 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 and wolf. The space wolves are incredibly uninspired. Yay, I get there. Yay, I get a good spot next to the nav. Just wait. Please also welcome Gumbler. You burned Look at the Nylum, book. Nylum. <laughs> Stop uh, burning the damn budget. Now we can't afford great. Now I can't even afford to feed the great. Now we can't afford Dunn's blood packs. Lovely. Can you give me to our cousin vampires now? Thanks a lot, you thanks a lot, you asshole. You've ruined the budget. <laughs> glory. Glory. Oh. Glory to the great banner of we two hundred million dollars starting. We had a nylon, nylon, woof, 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 Nope. I don't know the actual budget that they spent on it. But I'm just joking because, you know, budget. We brought one. Well, Goldman Sachs will pay for it. Don't we yeah, have another probably. guest? Yeah, probably. Yep. Hello. Hello there. Well, um, uh, there. Well, I guess I'll be sleeping in the rain now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might be a little confused here. I have Probably. discovered the secrets to life. I will not share it with you, Dunn. Hey, I have a knife. That's I don't need it. You might just, would you like to see an impressive trick with it? What? I got. I got. Um. I got a knife here. 
that's way to kill dragons, surprisingly. <laughs> Don't you dare. Sink. Uh, Enough, guys. No killing yet. I didn't kill him. He was already dead. Damn you. I could have had my way with so many women, and you ruined it. Whoa. Yeah, don't worry. Have a turn back, you knife. Oh. Like, here, let me just stab you with it. <laughs> what? There, now you are now you live again. Yes. All right. Cool. We're all good now in the neighborhood. Oh, this should be fun. We're just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun. So apparently today, what we're going to be talking about is the pranks that were played on set. Hmm. So I would expect uh, Jason Momoa to play good pranks, but nobody else. Well, not Benny off and Weiss, anyway. Yeah, essentially their idea of pranks was... Um, oh, God, it's Weiss. He's here. Uh, yeah, their, their idea of pranks is... Um, sending fake scripts and lying to actors... Yeah, that's a prank, all right. That's totally no, it's prank. not. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! A prank, uh, is a prank is pulling a wedgie on someone. This is not a prank. Or pulling laxatives in the coffee. Yeah, that's a prank. <laughs> a bit of a dangerous prank if you overdose the coffee accidentally, but still prank. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy enough to fix. Hey, that's probably what happened. <laughs> that's the, after the uh, overdose on Lactodex, they went to the bathroom and wrote the script for season eight on it. Oh, <laughs> on the paper there. And then talk? they used it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> they couldn't leave the bathroom, so they had to make Greg, it up on their are you, own. Greg, are you insinuating that they know how to write? Uh, no, they were just very resourceful alrighty. and used toilet paper. So, okay. Well,. Yeah, like, have you been watching Liar Liar recently? <laughs> he should have washed himself. He just paints himself. That, that but yeah, putting hair dye in someone's shampoo. That's a crime. Lying to actors about love interests and things like that. Not a prank. Yeah. Well, pretty amusing anyway. Hey, I might have killed that guy across the street, but you know, I have a castle. So, <laughs> it's totally justified now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me welcome some people from the chat. Uh, welcome, uh, Becca Reeb. Welcome, Charles Calkins. Hawkins. Welcome, Space Junk. Unk. Unk. Pro is doing something Nylum. else. Nylum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Johan, nice to see you as always. I think I said Nihilus Nylum already. Um, you should see what he said when Wolf came on. Wolf, uh, Wolf, 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 Wolf. <laughs> welcome, uh, uh, fan fanatical old tactician. Mm -hmm. Fanatical tactician, lovely to see you. Uh, and welcome to uh, Sir Telly Goldslayer, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Kelly Godslayer. I apologize. I have to. I have to get it right. And yeah, yeah. yeah good old the good old machiculations meme. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> so here. Hello there. Don't know about you guys. Music in the background. Uh, oh, welcome, oh, Gray Fox. Alrighty. Well, oh my God, I'm hurt. Yeah, uh, so um, the classical music, I assume, is you, Valerian. Yeah, it's it turn off. It's yes, his that'd be great. Conquer the World mute theme, I guess. <laughs> Let me turn it way down anyway. 
Has he murdered like a billion people? I'm not sure why you even hear that because I got the earphones on, but hey. It may be your microphone, actually. Let me just turn it off. I mean, is it in the background or something? Yeah. Alrighty. Background, that's it. They play the snow. It's all Game of Thrones discussions now, just more stuff. Yeah. Maybe. Better? So, yep, that's better. Yep, that's better. (laughs) Um, So, okay, so even the chapter, like, is somewhat self aware. They're calling it Mummer's Farce. Oh my god. But, oh my god, just got the gun already. Yeah. I have the obsidian. Don't uh, you worry, I'm already with you. What's up, Chatter? Good oh, to see hey. you. It gets better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Have you seen the one from Grey Fox? Hello there. Don't know about you guys, but I'm here to suffer. Yeah, I showed yeah. that already. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm here for Gus Neff is here. Yes. Because Otherwise, wouldn't be able to join us if Neff was. You must, you must anti simp. <laughs> You must anti simp. Yes, I'm here this way. <laughs> yeah, you fucking simp. Uh, she's not oh, mediocre, and she is not a, and okay, she is not a simp. Okay, so I'm yeah, here. Drink this coffee. Yep. Wait, I want you to drink this coffee right quick. Uh, then I might go to the debate. Depends on the subject and the openness of the recipient. <laughs> and what you're calling the bay hang chat. Yeah, what I'm debating, like, if I'm asked to debate, like, the validity of fridging a person, person in a book, I will be like, no, fridging's lazy. Lazy, don't do it. It's in the hack, it's like 101 in the Hack Writer's Guide to Writing. Was it like, fridging, is it like you put a character away for a certain amount of time or something? No, you just kill, no, it's like killing a character, male or female, for the intent of... Uh, just making the person, the main character, and other characters suffer, suffer emotionally. And it's mm. usually resolved fairly quickly. It's really boring. Yeah. Um, oh, no, it has a question. Anti simp. Um, admirer Good. of good quality. Yeah. In this case, it's good quality kitty. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that's worth it. So, like, yeah, what happened to basically Han? Basically, what happened to Han? Yeah, he kind of got anti fridged almost, like, because nothing happened because of his death. <laughs> yeah, nobody <laughs> suffered. Nothing yeah. happened to his son. Nothing happened to Ray. Nothing happened to uh, Chewie. Nothing yeah, happened exactly. To the characters at all. Nothing matters. That, exactly. Sounds familiar, does it? Nothing mattered in the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That comes from a Green Lantern comic. Kyle Rayner came into his house and found his girlfriend, girlfriend chopped up in his fridge. That's where the thing fridging comes from. Oh, yeah. That would kind of rule my day. It yeah. would, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just open the fridge and like, oh, not the ice cream. Han Solo. Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. Oh, God. No. Cap, I will find the stake and drive it right into you if you ever repeat that again. Why? Do you not like Jason Derulo? No. Not that one, anyways. What's the. Okay. Worst trope. Oh. One of my worst. Deus Ex Machina. Jason uh, Machina. Army. I hate Deus Ex Machina oh, yeah, a that. lot. It, it's that or Keystone Army bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to. Yeah. Alrighty. So getting into the topic at hand. Uh, and we'll uh, answer questions. I'm done to take pauses and answer questions. So, okay. So, okay. So this is a verbatim quote. Uh, during the early seasons of Game of Thrones, the showrunners were known for pulling pranks on their cast. Oh, oh, my ears. What a prank, Glarion. 
Um, <laughs> sometimes the actors would play a prank. Sometimes an actor would play a prank of their own. Interesting. Um, um, <laughs> thank you. We mean, De- wait, we what mean is that it? People don't Deus pronounce- ex machina? Wait, people actually <laughs> honestly got to pronounce it like that? Deus Some ex people machina? do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, then we had, so, okay, so, sh- behind the scenes hijinks are usually a sign of a close knit grip. And the comprehensive list of all, sit- all uh, Game of Thrones pranks will not ever be made public. Uh, mm. my, of course, so Jason Momoa said this my funny prank stories are not appropriate and are maybe illegal they will die with me and with the people I did with on <laughs> why would you say that <laughs> uh, compared to uh, to Benioff and Weiss n- I doubt it yeah, the power and balance of the show were per- yeah, yeah, that that is actually yeah that is kind of scary, and it's mostly like kind of like things that would actually scare an a- a- actor, like sending them fake scripts. I believe Dragon Demands actually has a uh, a a video about David Benioff's pathological liar problem. Yeah, I remember that, but I don't really remember much of it. I remember yeah, the we'll video. have to. Maybe we'll cover that later. Later, maybe we'll cover that. I was thinking about covering it before we did this, but can maybe... you give me the bullet points? I don't remember it. Basically, David Benioff is a child in an adult's body, who in a has, in a who, um, about who wants to um, like he he likes the powerful rush he feels whenever he lies to people so what he'll do is he'll send a fake they send fake scripts to their own actors i can't some, think of anything that would be more terrifying and some of them were that actually could really fuck plausible somebody up. and some of them were plausible like theon Greyjoy, they thought uh, alfie allen when he first got the thri- script thought that they were killing off his character at the end of season two so for a minute, and then he gave, gave and then he uh, got the real one. He said, "JK, you're not. We're not firing you." <laughs> Jeez, I could really uh, screw that's, with somebody. That's like, not a prank. That's that's a horrible prank. That's a horrible idea, in General. Yeah, yeah, you don't do that because then they might not come into work the next day when you really, really need them. And it can also mess up their acting because, like, because you just give them the script at the last moment, and you don't give them any time to prepare. Well, well, and they don't know how to say the lines right or anything. Yeah, that too. Well, the thing is, they already did. They did that once with, um, uh, <laughs> um, what was it? The um, uh, they they did that with Daenerys, where they said, "Hey, uh, Amelia Clark, um, ha- how about um, you learn this uh, Valyrian uh." Uh, it's like, uh, hey, uh, we want you to do this stri- script in Valyrian. Hi, Valyrian. Uh, you you have two hours. Uh, kind of just make it up. And it was just like, are you joking? No. Are you joking? This is this is insane. You can't even Fuck. like shoot off a. Can't wait a day for your friggin' linguist English to say like, hey, this is. Um, kind of not cool. This is uh, yeah. Like you, that's part something. of this, this whole. Yeah, yeah. That's this the problem. Part of it is impulsive. Yeah, and it's just he's been a pathological liar. Just at the last at, minute, it kind of. He's been a, and part of the thing is it's just the pathological liar thing. Like he's been yeah. a pathological liar by his own admission since he was a child. <laughs> Yeah. Which is um like like not cool and like his parents never ever um punished him over it. They honestly didn't seem like they cared. 
they just said, oh, how cute. And then just the let him go on. about out his day. And it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's just kind of weird that just like, and, and like he just fairly admits this in an entry. Hi, I was a pathological liar. It's just like, that's not something you admit in an interview. Why? No. How has Netflix not fired him yet because of that? I because they already wasted their money on him, and because Netflix doesn't screen their employees, he is apparently. Yeah the the uh, explosive yeah the explosives thing is still kind of mind blowingly hilarious. And- <laughs> they totally committed. They committed a crime. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Get me off for a second. Wait a minute, it's cutting in and out. They admitted what? that they were a pathological liar, yes, and yep. they admitted to smuggling explosives into Morocco. I believe it was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and you better hope that it was actually, if, if anything, if they were smuggling a dynamite, that's a serious level high crap. Like smuggling yeah. a carry is a, bad, is a crime, but it's the degree of what you're trying to smuggle in that varies. Oh. This yeah, is... it depends on what the explosives were and if they were already explosives by the time they did. Like if I they suppose. were explosive chemicals, that's one thing. But if they were freaking, uh, if it was actual explosives ready made, about to go boom, boom. Oh boy, yeah. like it, both of them are bad, but one's way worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and on top of that, dynamite is okay, not this... very stable. Okay, this one and White died. And he's back. So this this one's just cruel. David Benioff, a mild prank that we played, uh, on pulled during season one. We told Maisie and Sophie since they were underage, they couldn't come to the pilot rap party. Already, so we told them they were going to have a special underage rap party at McDonald's. They started crying. What? Yeah, no, you don't do that to little kids. Yeah, um, yeah. This is definitely pathological liar symptoms, and and like this yeah. fits with the this fits with the pattern. Yeah, pranking uh, is not just lying; it's just very elaborate deceiving. Yeah, I must dangerous. have missed something. What was what's, what's going on? What's one of those pranking has what? to be funny. Pranks didn't come to the cast party. And then they started, the, the girls started crying. The only kids at that time. Yeah. yeah. Then, they came, then they came to the real rap party and cried through that because they thought they might never see each other again. Oh, that's sweet. No, it's not really fun. Yeah. All right. So, uh. oh, oh, great. Oh, <laughs> I know this one. This one's, okay, this one, it's not bad but it's just like i knew this one and it fits with the pattern okay so the showrunners so kit harrington got fake script during season one where john snow saves commander mormon for an undead white only in this version snow threw burning drapes onto the creature and the flames engulfed them both when the fire was out we saw by torchlight that all of john's hair was burned down to the scalp read the bold, bogus skip gripped this okay this feels like this consistent problem with script writing that this guy has that he doesn't yeah. write a script it's weird book prose yeah it's i'm just going up like, i'm just going i'm going it's like both writing right but it's different styles of writing you need to know what you're doing just because you know how to write book prose does not mean you know how to write script prose yeah and you need to write you need to at least read a manual on how to write a script. If not, take a class for it. No, but manuals are stupid. The best. <laughs> yeah. And manuals it keeps, are stupid. And it yeah, keep, obviously. Get with the program. And it keeps <laughs> going. And it and it keeps going. The skin on no. the top half of his face was has been melted by the extreme heat, built blistered and pustulant. Despite what must have been extreme agony agony of permanent disfigurement. John stands stoically by his master's side. John smiles. 
His what? teeth shining brightly in his destroyed face. Mormont sickened, what has to look away. Why do we have to know all this extra information? I don't. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> it's like. No. You know that we're not. That this is not very useful information. Jesus, well, these people are dumb. Uh, we can post it so we can post it to the forums and say sarcastic things about it after after. Well, after it's this. just like this isn't a script. No, it's this not. Is not it's, a script. It's obviously book prose. Yeah, and it's just you. It's it's just more clear, like just statement that this man literally does not know how to write a script. It's insane. He doesn't know how to write, period. I, I don't see why no, he, he doesn't. Does. He does, yeah, and... he, I, I would definitely agree. He doesn't know how to write, like, wish, in general, but... I wish he was just a little all wrong. But factually, by his own admission, he does not know how to write a script. He's never... Yeah. He, is, he actively refuses he to... Be we can't... We don't know what the people are thinking, because we can't get inside their heads. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is like such uh, basic shit that any fucking child would know. Yeah, yeah this is a pair of fanfic writers saying this. That's insulting the fanfic yeah. writers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, listen, you're looks really down when, when two fanfic writers know more about writing than you do. Hey, yeah. it's, 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 you're right. Becker, uh, whatever. Like, yeah, because it's a shock file to freak it out. Yeah, because these faces, these performances. It's yeah, it's joke. like neither Wolf or I make a single cent on the writing that we do. But mm -hmm. we still know a lot more than these guys do about I, writing. Yeah. And we've never confident. even written scripts. And we still know that there's a big difference between book pros and script pros. Ugh. It makes me yeah. more competent if, like, if I was ever thrown into this position, at least I would get that point across. Yeah. At least I would, I would learn how to do it. I, I would how. be carrying a manual on how to write scripts with me the entire time just to make sure I was doing it properly. I would just yeah. be poking at George like every five seconds about every little thing. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Because he said he wanted a... Oh my accurate God, cause... adaption. And you can't yeah. have an accurate No, because my, uh, my, uh, talking him going, what? My, this uh, is what we're doing. Crap. How do we make it fit the books <laughs> better? My old, uh, <laughs> my old, uh, friend's, uh, uh, friend's, his friend, uh, he's like one of those super casuals. And when I said, like, this season's dumb and, like, this episode's done, I'm talking about the White Hunt. And he's like, oh, yeah. Why, why don't you write it? I'm like, I could write it better. I think multiple. I know that for a fact. So, White Dragon, have you heard of the Boston University virtual season eight? No. Essentially, no, essentially, what happened was a group of script write, a group of young aspiring script writers, for just like a thing, a thing decided, hey, let's write a virtual season eight, um, and. Can you guess when it came out? Before season eight. Yep, it came out before season eight. Yeah, heck, uh, I could write all of those episodes better, and I'm not even a fan. The thing is, I would probably start at season like the end of season six because every like a lot of stuff in season seven is really dumb. So I yeah, would change that first. Five. Yeah. Well, it's it's basically just the last half of the show basically was just turgid and bad and for many reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe trying to have like, like uh, an actual discussion with a casual person who really doesn't think too much. Yeah. And like and they're like, no, it's good because the writers wrote it that way. Someone actually said that <laughs> like, to me. No, Creative, that's creatively. Not. <laughs> Creatively, it made sense to us, essentially. Wait, that's kind of circular reasoning, isn't it? Huh? It's, yeah, it's, it's good circular. because they wrote it that way. So anything yeah. that's written is good, then. everything is good. Yeah, these are the yeah. It's kind of like people who don't really think about movies and TV shows all that much. They just 
think because they're the writers that they know what's best. The kind of yeah. people. If yeah, Dice like the brain didn't lead it to death, then I would say that's how we get into somebody's head. Yeah, let's uh yeah, let's keep going. So the twist had Harrington believing he would play a gruesomely disfigured character for the rest of his time on the show and would have to spend hours getting prosthetic makeup applied each morning. Wow. No, that's not a that's not a prank. That's not funny. I wait, no, wait, not, wait pranks clarify. are supposed to be funny. Clarify. Maybe not in the moment, but pranks are supposed to be something you look back on mm -hmm. and go, oh Darn. my god, I can't believe you got me with that. Ha ha ha. Not funny. Dude, Darn, can funny. you clarify that they actually did not actually go through the makeup process of that? I, I don't think so, no. Because that's oh, what they... Okay, so... Um, okay, so... According to... Um, okay. No, please don't tell me they actually did. No, I don't think so, no. Uh, no, they didn't. Um, oh, um, so, they told, so we told Kit that HBO worried the Jon Snow storyline was too Harry Potter. The fuck does that even mean? <laughs> uh, and they wanted to do... They, and do... <laughs> what the and. And they wanted to make it wanted to do something to make it darker, and they Harry thought he Potter. was. I don't know why they panicked freaking <laughs> Harry Potter. Does that have to that's do just a bad Harry sign. Harry, that's just a bad sign because Harry Potter ended up poorly written, anyways. Wait, what? Say that again. Okay, so, um. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so they worried that the Jon Snow storyline was too Harry Potter. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, well, it's a... No, too Harry Potter. It would be too Harry Potter if Jon Snow was going to a school and doing this. As or but, just kind of like, or if well, he just went just... back to the same people that abused him over and over again every single year. <laughs> And yeah. had a miraculous, and, or it would probably be more story. interesting than what happens in the end. Like, he actually uh, defeats the big bad in the end. <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter defeats the big bad at the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. he defeats, he'll be again. He defeats yeah, the big bad twice. He defeats him more than twice. Oh, you want me yeah. to kill him again, right? Okay, um, let me just grip my dragon glass dagger. Yeah, so up your ass, fucking David Benioff. He, Harry Potter is way better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, no. Only... Vi only... <sighs> I I don't really like Harry Potter all well, that much. It's a comparison. I, it's still yeah. better than anything. Better, off yes. white that's did. not yeah. saying. Yeah. That's not saying a whole lot. No. Because <laughs> the, the, the only good written books, like the only good parts of good writing in a series, is just in the first three books. Everything else is getting worse, and it just got worse and yeah. worse. Like, the ending was absolute shit. Yeah, the ending was. You know, yeah, I think getting off thought, the, what was wrong with the what was wrong with the ending? I don't. Ha I actually think the ending is actually they my favorite part war, of the series. And nineteen years later, nothing has changed. Basically, it's practically the same. And then it's like relationships that never uh, really developed. I never liked Ginny. Like, like, granted, I watched the movies. I never read the book, so I never, this is I, all on you guys. Granted, so great. I only saw the movies, but here's the thing: I still found Ginny as a character to be so lacking. Because oh, yeah, Jenny was basically oh, no not reason. a character. Guys, like, yeah. was no previously, like, there was no growth relationship between Harry and Jenny, and then it's just yeah, fuck, it's now nowhere. And then if, Ron, or, if or, they or, wanted to set it up so that because, Harry and Ginny spent a lot of time together, then why not have someone have Hermione or something tutoring her if she's having yeah. problems? Make her a bigger presence. Don't just stick her into book two and then put her on a bus for the next several books. She barely has a presence. She's like yeah, barely. That's it all. It's like super weird because all the main characters are all in the same house despite the fact they show traits that would be more connected to the other houses. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, for my smart, why is she in Gryffindor? Yeah. Her Ron's loyal. Why isn't he in Hufflepuff? It's, yeah, and that's just Slytherin and Draco Malfoy, and how the and how it's like they're really ain't developed for either. And it's just even Slytherin the Malfoy. even the characters that are only names are more interesting than Ginny. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Ginny in the movies doesn't have any so any um any character at all. But she, she was, I forgot who was that character again. The redhead that Harry impregnates. Dude, I don't remember <laughs> that part. Just J.K. Rowling. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I'd actually think that that would be better. That would be actually much better. Like literally oh, everything in Harry Potter yeah. movies is better than Game of Thrones season. Okay. Yeah. Okay, serious. Thank you for okay. Or right here, serious. Oh, that's because J.K. Rowling intended to have Hermione be with him, Hermione. For some reason, she changed it later on. Did she just have the series become super ultra dark and have to kill the character in every single book? Which I don't mind that. That's actually good. I think but, that's fine. But people like serious. Well, kill those series. That was yeah. yeah, but Harry Potter was for Game of Thrones. That was before that that whole yeah, kill all the characters the, fan. The last book it was especially bad. Because yeah. they put Hedwig in a cage in order to get her out. Um, you idiots, she's a bird. Let her fly away. She'll find Harry later. She's his pet. She's always been able to find him. Why would you confine her to a cage where she can be hit by a freaking one-hit insta-kill spell? Why? Why it's would you do that? There's no reason to kill it's his It's called best. a compot contrivance. <laughs> in book seven, they spend most of their time in tents. It's just, so like, it's it's like his age just starts going through puberty to start to start. <sighs> yeah, let's uh, uh, let's move uh, on from Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, let's, no, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. We've already. Yeah. Um, so okay. Uh, so so they thought that so HBO thought that uh, Kit Harrington was such a strong actor that he could handle being in the. Um, it like going through the grues gruesomely grueling transformation, and then he, he uh, they he could handle it. Um, uh, so they kept it up until they started laughing. Okay. Did he laugh? Mm, uh, he was remark. They all they said was okay. So he, apparently. According to Dan Weiss, he was a remarkably good sport about the whole thing. No, he wasn't laughing. I wasn't laughing. If I'm not <laughs> laughing in the... If it's not... If I don't I'm, laugh, I'm it's not, not funny. Laughing. No, it's yeah. not. And it's, it's like... like in order for the part to be successful, multiple people queen. have to laugh. If only you are laughing, that's a bad sign. Yeah, a very bad sign. Like I and get to all the, even worse. Like I get, when, like, I could be why, like I could be wise to tell all the worst puns in the world, well, and I'd still be more funny than Dan Weiss. Yeah, yeah. So and two, you know you've made a mistake when your child actresses are crying. Yeah, unless you that's know what I heard that. <laughs> unless that's what you wanted them to do. Well, unless it's part of the script, then yeah. But if your prank is to tell them they can't come to a party the rest of the cast members are going to, that's not a prank. That's being downright me. It's bullying, it's, essentially. Bullying. Yeah. Yeah. Children. What? I'll be granted. It's like, they're children, but seriously. Yeah, admittedly, like, um, what's it? Uh, yeah, like admittedly, like it's just, yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah, it's just bad. It's, yeah, it, it's kind of rough when your boss does it. Yeah, like because you're, you're, but we all know, like Scott Michaels, right? From The Office. Yeah. That's the kind of Michael boss you don't Scott. It's Michael Scott. Scott. Michael Scott. <laughs> Never trust a guy. You that don't has... want that kind of boss. No, yeah, he's he's incompetent. He's he's trying too hard to be relatable when he's supposed to be their boss, and nobody takes him seriously. Oh, just wait. We're getting to one of those. Oh no! But that's what that's what these two are. They're they're a worse version of Scott Michael Scott. Yeah, without all the humor. Yeah, at least Michael has that charm about him that he's just unbelievably incompetent at just trying too hard. 
But you don't want to be a real life per you don't want to be a real life Michael Scott. Because no. he's the boss he shouldn't be. No. Definitely not. But he's the boss that tries to be buddies with everybody. He's the boss that tries to be relatable. He's the boss that tries to be hip with the kids. Be hip with them kids. How you do, hey. fellow how do you do, fellow youths? I need to get that. I need to get that. Fellow writers. I need to get that because this feels like it's a Hello Future Kids thing perpetually throughout this whole dang book. Yeah, that's certainly what it feels like. Yeah. Oh. oh, So. But like, like you said, if the only time your boss can get away with it is if you know them extremely well and they've been your friend for a long time. Outside of working. Yeah. Yeah. So, in season two, Benioff and Weiss gave Alfie Allen another face ache script. Uh, in the season finale script, concluded with Bran Stark getting revenge on Theon Greyjoy by capturing his family castle. This is my Winterfell, not yours, Bran declared, and stabbed the traitorous Theon through the heart. How exactly is he going to do that? He's a cripple. Well, well, he wheels them up there. He can hold our, you know, he just, he just how walks this, up how to him. this happen? Oh, my gosh. How does it it happen? Why Wait, he, he just has a sudden wheelchair. He just, eh, eh. The wheelchair. Spran stabs Theon. <laughs> He's like, yeah. a, like a little kid at this point. This He's is like, really This real- is my with a fell. <laughs> oh my gosh! It was so, so funny. Unless he warns uh, somebody. Uh, okay, so, oh great! Except the prank didn't fully go as planned. I oh, wonder why. why? Yeah, you don't yeah. say. Yeah. So you keep. <laughs> okay. Oh, if you that... want to do a fake script kind of thing, you have to make it obvious okay. that it's fake. Oh, I think that they did. Oh, so okay, so okay, the okay, so the reason why is actually kind of funny. Um, okay. So that that one backfired because Alfie was in Ibiza and deep enough into whatever chill mode he was in, according to that's an exact quote from Dan Weiss. Chill mode. These guys seem like frat boys, because chill mode is not something I would put as like an interview quote that's really weird yeah no must be chill bro yeah so i alfie allen i thought it was cool i was i went on holiday and david and ann were thinking i was going to call up saying wait hold on a minute whoa 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 but i just got on with it and then they made it clear to me later it was all a joke we had dan we had to go so far to get a what rise out of him, according to Dan Weiss, you're a dead, naked zombie. What? Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I am the only dead, naked zombie yeah, in this don't stream. You understand? <laughs> you're a dead, naked zombie. <laughs> Dead naked zombie what? What the, I am the only one the who's allowed to have that title, what? Mr. Benioff. Oh my god! No! Oh, no, 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 all this, no, no, this Reviver knife has anything to say about it. Shink. That's amazing. That's amazing. Naked. And not just, Damn it. And not just. There. And not just, and not just naked. <laughs> not just. Dead naked <laughs> zombie. Dead naked zombie. As opposed to a live naked zombie. It just it becomes a white suddenly. <laughs> you can't only just become miraculously a white on the other side of the oh wall, my you gosh, dingus. That's so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> a dead naked zombie. That's, that's better true. dialogue than half the show. Mm. We could come up with better dialogue. <laughs> oh, good God. Wow. Dead. dead naked zombie. Oh, with with ellipses that too. Is so <laughs> okay, I got a question to ask. I, I got I got a serious question to ask here. I got, I got a question to ask. Redundant. That's so freaking redundant. Hang on, guys. Listen, I got a question to ask. If you're dead, does it fall off? 
<laughs> no, it's not for me. Man. I mean, it's like, um, technically, since there's barely any skin cells there, you would think it just like, uh -huh. lobs away or something. That's no, right. you're wrong. Right, I'm back. Yeah. The zombies okay. are undead. Well, you see, yeah. I, I'm like word. a reptile zombie, so it stays inside me when I'm not using it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's All still right. there. Oh, no, see, if it's the coffee kicking in because it turns you back into a white. Yeah, <laughs> I have blue screens. Yeah. <laughs> so. As, I mean, yeah, the question. Yeah, that's the good question. Why? <laughs> that's why? <laughs> why? Yeah. That's, yeah. Crazy, just, that's why. Yeah, just the, a the show. Just a John Travolta clip right quick uh, from Bolt Fix. He was just going like, why? What, you, yeah. you actually get that clip this time? No, I don't have it. I have the, oh, hi, Mark. And then he Hang reacts the like stick. that. What? The what? Hang, hang, with, hang with the, a ring of stakes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's like... like the welding it, torch. Are you fucking yeah, it's, shitting no, this, this, me? This are you shitting me? <laughs> yeah. I'm confused. What did you put in my coffee again? Wait, I don't drink coffee. What'd you put? In, don't. What'd you put in my water? Yeah, it's just. I what just... did you put in this coffee? <laughs> I didn't see that. That didn't happen. That couldn't have. That's I'm me. Sorry, I don't drink coffee. What'd you put in this tea? I could have sworn it's been in front of me the whole time, and you're not even here. That's uh, a plot <laughs> hole. I see that clip. That's me watching Carnival Phantasm, and I say that in a good context because holy crap, it makes me feel as if I took all the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it like to take drugs? As being a zombie, I don't. They don't really affect me. <laughs> hey, I have this dragon glass dagger. Do you want it? That makes me even more dead. But yeah, I guess I might need it later. <laughs> All right, I'll just put it here. Thank you. I got it. Alrighty. So we just had to keep adding unpleasant adjectives to the word zombie. What? What? You're dead, <laughs> naked, bald. Old. Okay, I think and I he... know what was going on. He was probably smiling because it was he thought it was funny. Yeah, I guess. And okay, it's like so... guys, your prank worked. I'm this is funny. Stop it. Yeah, you're, you're ruining the joke. Just end it. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Okay, so Rose Leslie was also pranked after the showrunner heard that she was terrified of singing in public. Oh, okay. God, no. They made her do that, didn't they? Oh, God. You don't do that! Yeah, so the duo gave Leslie a script where she performed a lengthy song, The Last of the Giants. Uh, <laughs> the song includes lyrics... Such as, oh, I'm the last of the giants, so learn well the sad words of my song. For when I am gone, the singing will fade, and the silence will last long and long. Okay, uh, that never <sighs> happened, clearly. Um, that happened. So I'm remembering that. It's a great in my memory. Done here by good sing. Turns out those bloody of aloneness did teach you how to sing. Hmm. So, the showrunners even once pranked an actor who wasn't on Game of Thrones. Okay, why is this here? <laughs> um? I don't know why this is here. I stopped asking why questions a minute ago. Why? I don't. Why? 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 The letter Y. Uh. All funny in Philadelphia. Why? What is the point here? Why? I What's don't the there for no reason. For no yeah. reason. Yeah. So they're friends with the creator of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Ra uh, El, El, El Haney, who recommended that recommended Thrones hire frequent sunny director Matt Sheckman. Despite him being lacking in action experience, they took a chance on him and gave him to it ambitious season seven episodes including the battle intensive spoils of war which is the dragon fight one which yeah um so they thought it would be funny if we told matt that rob that was not working out with matt that he was a total disaster 
if Puts feels so guilty because he recommended it. So we've met back and forth on email slowly, not throwing it out there all at once, asking questions on. So when Matt's on set, how does he usually behave? Rob was like, what, 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 what's wrong? We told him we were going to step in and take over the episode because it turned into such a mess. Oh, uh, no. Uh, it turned into a mess because they stepped in. No, they didn't. Like, they actually didn't. They didn't do that. No, they, the did problem not, is, they didn't they, do that. They, that's just a, this is a... Uh, it's a prank. This is a prank. This is this never it's a, happened. It's just a prank, dude. I'm not your guy, guy. I'm not your guy, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Matt Shackman. I forgot about that. It was it, that was the darkest practical joke. Oak. Rob was legitimately tortured by it. He was so concerned for me and was like, "What did I do? Who can I talk to?" It went on for way too long. Ah, thank you. It went on for way too long. Thank you. Thank you. When it goes on for long enough, a prank stops being a prank and starts just being bullying. Yeah. So Dan, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, Dan. Dan Weiss. When it got to the point where Rob was thinking of calling his agent, what? <laughs> thinking of calling his agent. Wow. Um. Uh, we took a picture of us, Kit, Amelia, and Tendothraki all giving Matt the finger. We sent the photo to Rob, and it was beautiful. What? <laughs> what? Uh, that was... Uh, okay, What's, what did they do again? I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so it got to the point where... Uh, so I'll, I'll read it again. When it got to the point of... Um, Rob was thinking of calling his agent about the whole thing... Uh, they sent a. They took a picture of Dan Weiss and David Bedioff, uh, Tendo Thraki, Kit Harrington, and Amelia Clark, all giving them the finger. Mm. I'm just, no, that's not funny. Listen, how did before. some? How did some of these people not quit? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know horse? why. I don't was, know why nobody is calling these guys out. It's it not shoot, funny. Listen, shooting the horse once isn't yeah. funny. Shooting it or poorly, it's not going to get in our reaction from me. No, yeah, it's, it's like with pranks. With pranks, it's a new. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is not like a. This is a like legit real world thing. It's kind they of. They are really lucky. That a lot of these people didn't quit. Yes. Because these people are some of the nicest people I could possibly read about from I, I, from <laughs> the actors and actresses. It's, I would quote. But Benny Off and Weiss, it's like we're douchebags and we don't mind being douchebags. You want to prank? Give me their coffee. <sighs> You'd better put enough laxatives in it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do their style. So they think I'm gonna do their style thing. Hey, I'm gonna go find a dog real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so, okay. So Nikolai K Esther Waldau, Jamie Lannister, ah, he decided that again. somebody yeah. should Good. somebody should play a prank on the showrunner for a change. Okay. Oh, that's um, okay. Yeah. I'm back yeah. with a coffee. Oh and dear. I'm back with a coffee. Okay, I'm back with a so, coffee, and I put something in it. So okay, after good. finishing primary filming on one of the mid-run seasons, before but before he was needed to come back for some reshoots, Caster Waldau sent the producers what dubbed dis dubbed an angry actor email. Okay, interesting. Yes, um, Nylas Nylum. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially when you're going into Morocco. If you say that to the... I'm surprised they didn't get thrown out of the country. Yeah, I'm amazed. I'm surprised they didn't get yeah. caught. Now here's the review for what I put in their coffee. Piss. Good. Mm, too good. Uh -huh. now, that, now that's a prank. Kind of. Yeah, they're lucky that there haven't been any lawsuits against them. Yeah. So... 
he wrote how he was upset that they were changing his hairstyle. <laughs> changing his hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, good. Jo- I actually like. You know what? Good on you, Nick. Nikolai, good on you. <laughs> yeah. So, but seriously, well, at the point where they were going, maybe we should prank them back. Is actually the point at where you should be saying, "I'm not sure I can work in this environment anymore." Yeah. 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 It's it's kind of frustrating. So I would be surprised the, if one decided to get back using their style of humor and just it just let the dog just like a bag of dog poo on their desk. Yeah. Ooh, good idea. idea. Who let the dogs out, essentially? Yeah. Um, Perhaps this book will be their downfall. It's basically them admitting their crimes. Kind of. Oh, yeah. we'll see if that Before actually you... works. I mean, if it pers- doesn't oh. happen, well, eh, it's can't say they didn't try. Yeah, <laughs> true. So yeah. this is mostly the showrunners pranking the actors. That's kind of what I suspected. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So Nikolai felt the need to own his hair because his hair was part of his character, and he was going to take it upon himself to get his own car- haircut that he felt best reflected Jamie Lannister as he saw him. We said we. He ho- he said we hoped we'd re- he'd understand and he'd send us a picture shortly. Day by day, day days, day went by. Okay, interesting old typo. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, that's an easy one. Should have picked that up, but it's fine. Um, so finally 70 hours later we sent he sent us a picture of him with this military bus cut (laughs) 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 okay Okay. that works that works that is awesome (laughs) that is awesome military (laughs) bus Perhaps you should turn your phone off. What? Your DNA. Oh, wow. Yeah. He he shaved all of his hair off, and we had reshooting to do with him. We'd have to get a Jamie Lannister wig at the last minute at tremendous expense. That's right there. Gave Jamie a fucking buzz. That right there. That right there. That right there is a prank. Yeah. Yeah, that's a prank. Okay, so what? okay, this bit's hilarious. So <laughs> HBO's lawyers were calling his lawyers. Then he emailed El, El back and told us the picture was from five years ago, and he hadn't cut his hair at all. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. <laughs> um, Dan Weiss. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> Oh dear. This is Uh-oh. not okay. This is interesting. So, David Benioff and Dan Weiss also played a prank on me, i.e., James Hibbard, and said uh, during during their interview for the book you're now holding. What? Oh, really? It, uh, it, th- that's odd. Um, what? It's, like it? It just seems as though they can't turn it off. They just can't turn it off. They Once they lie, they have to admit it. They just have to perpetually, perpetually do it. It's like it's 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 kind of like they it's have a pathological. No, they yeah, it's it, pathological. They, yeah, it is pathological. They have no button that turns it off. Yeah, they don't know how to be adults, and they were never taught to be adults, and they. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, I, I tried just... to, I get, I tried to get the showrunners to reveal whether Jon Snow was in fact the prince of his promise, as or high, the reincarnated prophesied savior that Melisandre was searching for throughout the series. Okay, the show's over. You can tell him whether he's the, whether like. 
Kaminsky's Azor High. All their response, so he asked, so was Jon Snow in the show at least the prince who has promised? Dan Weiss just said, ask Kit. And D David Benioff, you should ask Kit. Dan Weiss, yeah, Kit knows. Months later, during Kit Harrington's interview, finally there's, James Hibbert, finally there's one question that the D said I should ask you. Um... Finally, there's just one more question I should ask you. Was Jon Snow the prince who was prom promised? They said they told you. Jon Snow, did they? Did they? F, I, c I don't remember. No, wait. They didn't tell me crap. They're just taking the piss out of you and offloading that question onto me. Oh my no. god! Oh, oh, I am not surprised! Well, that's closer to an actual prank, but still. Uh, uh, this fits with so many things. This fits with so many pro. Okay. Yeah. This fits with I this think is this is something bigger than we think. This. Yeah. This is okay. So. This is this is has story implications. No. I no think. Not even. Not even that. There's a big. Uh, this fits with their usual thing of. Um, uh, what is it like foisting difficult questions onto the? Oh yeah, like the. Uh, but like that's the not a difficult thing. question. Yeah, it's well, just they foist every single question onto the actors, and they don't answer answer questions. Yeah, yeah they do that. Yeah. that that's freaking. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's scummy. Part of this Hiding that's, behind the actors, classic D and D cowardice. Yeah, yep. that's that's yeah, that's the that's the generalized. Pla that's the that's a that's another part of the pattern it's like it's like every it's single a pattern of behavior that they always seem to have and they yeah. this is why they should not be in this line of work because they another, yeah and just another pro another like distinct problem with this is it's like dragon to, all of dragon demands like Conclusions and theories. True. They're true. All of it. It's, it's all like, true. It's, it's like Han Solo of, from Episode Seven. It's all true. All of it. Yep. So. Uh, yep, it's all true. So yeah. Dragon Chat did write this book, did he? I, <laughs> maybe I don't know. He might as well have. <laughs> he, he knew so way before any of us. He, he, yeah, yeah, he did. He Dragon certainly did. Dragon demanded, Dragon demanded to John Wick to these two. Yeah, I think the problem. I think the main thing about this is, he, this is just basically like he's just like all of the patterns that. This is just like this is confirmation of all of the patterns that Mister Dragon Demands has been saying. Like this is just a consistent, like it's just insane. Like how consistent the pattern is. Like he put out yeah. his, like pathological liar his why David Benioff is a liar thing mm -hmm. um, before this, and it's basically a confirmation of everything he said in that. It's insane. Basically, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just. Does anybody okay, ever? So, does anybody want to talk about the story stuff too? Okay, okay. So, okay, this is okay. This is infuriating. Uh, oh, right. Okay, Har the Harrington. By the way, figure the prince's promise was most likely Bran. Shh, the Kit Harrington's not a dude writing the freaking script. Yeah, and uh, god damn it. Yeah, it's. Oh, uh, that's he's. He, doesn't have any input on the freaking script. What is wrong with you? What is wrong? Yeah, what is wrong with you, idiots? It's, um, well, Dragon of Mantis, the entire event is currently compiling a list of mental health conditions they probably have and most likely do have. Yeah. Well, for, well I know. Well, we know for sure David Benioff's a narcissist. That's I mean, obviously, and he has. Yeah. Well, obviously, he's a. Um, he's a liar. He's, he's a pathological, pathological liar. He's a pathological liar. Uh, potentially, he may be a what's the terminology I'm looking for? I want to make sure I don't. Bipolar. He has anyophosis. Yeah, there's a lot of theories about what like the neuroses that Mister David Benioff has. Okay, he has a lack of conscious. Is he's tend he's no he tends to lie a lot, but doesn't. But it's not, not antisocial. It's based. On his, it's based. It's it's based on his um 
his uh what is it his neuroses um and yeah bipolar yeah um i don't think he's a sociopath that's... no he's not a sociopath uh, he isn't antisocial he does and he doesn't see he seems to have a lack of a conscience but once put it out the question because the actual definition of a sociopath is a person with a personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behavior and a lack of conscience. Yeah. So, okay, so, and, and it's just like... I don't and it's know. Just, I'd say, um, uh, I'd so, say that his, uh, so, his bullying of the uh, cast and crew speaks of a, um psychosis i suppose i think it's just it's it's the bratty teenager mentality that he wait has. i see brent hey brent what's up oh hey mm. yeah you thought you could <laughs> hide? Like, these eyes see he over twenty thousand kilometers long <laughs> it's like i see jack that's right in front of me so, <laughs> for okay, kingus so. and doorknob this is what Charlie Murphy calls a habitual line crosser. That's what they are. Yeah. <laughs> habitual line crossers. Well, yeah. he's spoiled and um, irresponsible. Basically, he's spoiled. That's what it is. He's No, he's not spoiled because his parents well, give but... him everything he absolutely well, wanted. Well, they just don't care. Uh, uh, okay, so according yeah. to, okay, so according to Brent, he's just standing very still. <laughs> Very funny. We see you. Yeah. So okay, okay. Um, but it's just kind of like he said, Brant. Like he said, Prince who was promised was most likely Bran. Shouldn't the showrunners be answering that particular question? That's a story-based question. That's just yeah. I mean, either that or George R. R. Martin himself should be answering that question, since you know he's the one writing the freaking books the series is based off of. You would think he'd know. Yeah, yeah. you think he would. You think he would. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. Part part of it's like yeah, it's just uh, trying to, but it's just it's so hard because it's just like he's just a weird collection of uh huh. He's just a weird collection of traits that kind of when you add them all up, they're just kind of like. Oh wow, this guy's just super impulsive. And maybe he's No impulse control whatsoever. Oh, I think that they could. Well, Jesus, I have more impulse control yeah, than they, they do. Yeah, they could. I have it more impulse. Very, very easy, yeah. Uh I have more yeah, impulse control than like, they do. But I think um what is it? Um I think Dragon the Man's like yeah. put it best where he like said I don't even. I like after looking at it. I don't really know if he has bipolar anymore. I'm serious. Maybe, maybe it's just this. Maybe he's just a reckless and irresponsible jackass. I think that's when he said he might be a narcissist. And that may be the video where he went on to say maybe he's just a. What's the expression again? The one with, the one with jackass in it. Okay. Um, lazy and a lazy and irresponsible jackass. Okay, so yes. Nice. So Nihilus is, our, is offering to ask a friend of his who is studying psychology to take a look at Benioff, figure out what he has. That would be nice. Yeah, That'd it be would be. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be nice, actually. Now, I'll be right back. I gotta use, I'll be right back. Gotta use the Do you do it with the war open or closed? That's the real question. Mm, yeah, it is. Alrighty. So, the most elaborate plank was preyed on John Bradley during season six when Sam Tarly returned home to, with Gilly to meet his estranged family. Except it wasn't the showrunners who came up with this one. Okay, interesting. Dan Weiss. Um, Hannah Murray had, lo had long had the crappiest costumes on Game of Thrones. She's been in a burlap set for five years. She was oh happy to finally get into a real piece of clothing. So, Kit and Hannah thought it would be funny to play a prank on John. And let him think he was going to get a new costume as well. Okay, that's, that's a prank. That's a prank. That's lame. Yeah, kind of lame, but... yeah. But that's that's a prank compared to what yeah. Benny often Weiss do. Yeah. So okay, so uh, 
Kit and I, Hannah Murray said, Kit and I came up with the idea that John should have a new costume and it should be really stupid. <laughs> but, um, it's like a clown. And he, we thought we'd tell him he had a stupid new costume and he'd be like, oh no, and it would be it. Then it would become, it became this little bigger, more elaborate thing than we'd imagined. So Dan, what? Betty often wise said the Thrones costume depart create a gaudy outfit that made Bradley look like a Renaissance Fair fool mm -hmm. and even staged a fitting session to help convince the actor it was legit. <laughs> that is going over the top. A little telling bit. someone telling someone that they're gonna have a costume change and it not happening is a crime. Yeah. But Having the showrunners go through with it because they think it's funny, that's no longer a prank. I mean, Honestly, how they do this a lot. It kind of kind of just gets old. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, if like, I yeah. was okay, like, okay, you'll get it to your fucking child. Can we, can we do yeah. the show now? Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's just he's a, he's a bratty teenager in an adult's body. That seems to be the consistent thing with this man. Isn't he in his 40s or 50s? Ooh, he's almost 50, yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's frustrating. Um, so we thought it would be... So Dan Weiss, we thought it would be great uh, if 8 to make the costume ludicrous, but just believable enough not to know it was a gag. So he'd think he'd be wearing this on screen. It was all rental stuff. Very Henry VIII. Eighth with Tudor bloomers and a massive cod piece. <laughs> oh, good lord. A cod piece? A Are you... <laughs> cod piece? Are you kidding me? Okay, that's hilarious. That's honestly hilarious. That's like... Wow. Can you, going... you imagine a scene of it? It's like I actually filmed it. Like, Night's yeah. Watch with me, and he wears that. I could oh. see that happening in the bloopers. Oh, hi, Becoming Better. How's it going? Oh, shit, I'm already on. Yep. Yep. I know that. Okay, what the fuck are we talking about? Like, I've seen this in the, like, in the Discord a lot, but... What is fire can or what is fire cannot kill a dragon? It's a it's the unofficial. It is the unofficial hit piece for David Benioff and DV Weiss. Uh, I I can't hear you because I'm hearing myself in the. In, there we go. I am. Had to mute, the, uh, did I miss? Oh hey Brent. There we go. Yeah, hi. Okay. Sorry, um, I had to mute my the thing in the uh, actual YouTube video because it was playing. Welcome to the It was killing me. All right, so what is the thing? So this is the official untold behind-the-scenes story of Game of Thrones. And for uh, whatever reason, the writer of this book decided to create an entire chapter about how there were multiple pranks played. Upon, upon whom? You, you were talking about uh, Sam's actor? Yeah. Yep, Sam's actor, yeah. Apparently, like, they made a costume for him that was really, really ridiculous. To be fair, his character was ridiculous, but... That is true, but... That is true, but at least, like, there's... An, oh, at least... <laughs> yeah. Right. I am now caught up. Yeah, so, okay, so... John Bradley, coin it, Sam Tyrely. I looked... So bad and ridiculous. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's there was a huge vulgar cod piece, though flattering to be sure. Oh my god. Mm. <laughs> okay. okay, I just don't know why I found that funny, but it kind of that's is. Amazing. Yeah, that's just, amazing. <laughs> just like you said, though flattering to be sure. Oh my god. Oh, you're you're just so mature, Mister Dunn. Oh, he's so it's, mature. It's, well, he's just saying flattering. It's it's. I just find that with the fact that jump. It's, it's flattering. They be, because they picked mm -hmm. a huge cod piece. That's what he's saying. I just think that's that's hilarious to me. <laughs> yeah, it's it is. Really funny. 
To be fair, I don't need a, a metal piece over my uh, cock to have a huge cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of ridiculous outfits, this is a complete diversion. But uh, do any of you guys watch Lindy Beige? No. I have no, no idea what, what that is. is. He, he's, he's an archaeologist. He doesn't really talk about art. He's a big history dude. Check him out. He's amazing. Um, but he was a historical advisor on some shitty movie. Um, and Lord Commander uh, Mormont's uh, actor was oh, in this movie. James Cosmo. Yes, James Cosmo. And uh, Lindy Beige accidentally fucking <laughs> said, like, but mentioned to him how stupid his outfit looked as he was about to go act for the day. <laughs> he was like, oh my god, your outfit's just like terrible. It's not accurate. It doesn't look good. Uh, but you know, like, five year old niece could put five year old uh, niece. Can, I'm actually not fucking five year old yeah. niece, but say this as a joke. My five year old niece can uh, can make better armor than you did. What what yeah. what is that from? No, that's just a joke. Oh, uh, okay. Or, it's been a while, yeah. but but yeah, he uh, he basically anyway. It's a funny story, but he, like they made up later. Like they met at some convention. And he's like, "I'm sorry, I did that to you." <laughs> but uh, anyway, completely off topic. Just what I thought yeah. I was thinking about. My so, bad. So okay, so I the reason I bought it was the reason why uh, John Bradley bought it was because um. The was as we never seen Sam at home before, and his parents think he's an idiot. Maybe Sam dressed like an idiot before he came to Castle Black. So why would he be wearing the crap clothes? <laughs> that's, that's really uh, has he read the books before? I don't know. I don't think so. It would make sense because no. he would probably know that doesn't happen. Yeah, if he did. So well, the thing. Well. He, well, his dad forced him to wear a dress in in order to shame him and to be stop being craven. Oh, let's talk about the but, actor. Yeah, well, well, yeah. as far as Sam's character, yeah, like uh, you don't even have to read the books to know that that's not in the books because I haven't read the books. But you can watch the show and tell that he's not. He's very intelligent. He's just a coward. So. He knows what armor looks like. He knows what proper dress clothes look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a bit rough. So, <laughs> Go ahead. so, okay, so, okay, so, Hannah Murray said he was talking about it the whole time. My hat. Have you seen my new costume? My hat has been comically small. He was really annoyed. He kept going. I'm sh He kept go. I had to keep going. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. Eventually, I went to David and said, "Are we going to tell him it's it, this is a joke?" And Benny, David Benioff, was like, "Yeah, we probably should." <laughs> um. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's. <laughs> um. No, it should not be. People should know when the, a joke is being played on them. It should I mean, not be something that people have to say. There are a few instances where jokes can fly over my head, but other times I catch them. No, I yeah. do think it's so. I think yeah. it's funny that the uh, the show had gotten so bad that the actor just didn't question how stupid his armor was. <laughs> yeah, like the degradation <laughs> of Brienne's armor throughout the show was embarrassing. Yeah, it's pretty bad. She so, like she already has good sets of armor that she then discards for floppy leather. Yeah. Leather. Well, it started to become leather a generic is, fantasy show at that a, point, so it kind of makes sense in that way. Leather is a leather is kind of more, um, you know, something you would give the uh, the lower horn, the soldiers. Sometimes in higher ups, you would expect them to be wearing <clears throat> you expect them to wear a chainmail or something. Well, right, but even if she was a broke bitch, she, which she isn't, she already has the armor. Why would she get rid of her armor for shittier armor? Yeah, uh, it's like, yes. that's not the way you're supposed to do it. It's you're R2 supposed R2 to start with shitty armor and then get better armor. Or two, you're supposed to going up, not down. Yeah. Yeah. 
If you have to explain the joke, then it's not a joke. Exactly. Oh, I completely missed yeah. it. I'm like, I just so, went over my head. No, it, no it's yeah. just a blunder. <laughs> so, I mean, okay. if other people are laughing at it, then it's obvious that it's a joke because they find it funny. Even if it went over your head. Yeah. So, John Bradley, you always think you're not going to fall for pranks. You always think, I'll see through it. And I cannot believe I didn't see through it. Damn wise. Near the end, pranks got difficult. Nobody trusts what you say anymore. With good reason. Uh, yeah, With very good reason, oh. Mr. Pathological Liar. That's a well, good one. Dan Weiss. Good well, it's one. Dan Weiss, not Benioff. But yeah, kind of same thing, same difference, really. Yup, yeah. that's me, folks. Uh, it's it's just kind of like it's just so frustrating. It's unbelievably frustrating that these guys, at uh, this, the it has. Uh, what, what was wait, that wait, line wait, again? I'm sorry. Repeat that again, okay, so I can write it down. Okay, Dan Weiss. Near the end, pranks got difficult. Nobody trusts what you say anymore. Yeah, because <laughs> you're because your part the guy that your partner's your partner in crime is a pathological liar with the mentality of a twelve year old. If that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I hope I was better than, than uh, as a twelve year old than that. Yeah, well. I know I was better than a twelve year old, and I was a shit kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Everyone here was a shit kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the age of thirteen, I, I probably was kind of. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so chapter thirteen. Shall we keep going? We're only what's, like an hour and a half. Next chapter. So it's going screaming. I do oh great. We're gonna be talking about Theon Greyjoy's torture. Oh, oh that's gonna be right. I'm just about to eat too. Oh, that's dear. one of the that's Think one of the few I just, I just why? I'm just I, I just have to ask why. Why oh, don't they ever talk about any of the bad stuff? Yeah, okay. Ramsey was one of the few parts of seasons one through four that was just cringe and terrible. Yeah, he was like the he throughout the entirety of his uh, his screen time, he was always a one dimensional character. He uh, he just felt like he didn't belong. Yeah, he wasn't really. I mean, even in the what book, you're he saying he was a, what you're saying he was a cardboard cutout in a world of actual people. Yes, yeah. basically. Yeah, all he was is just oh, torture. He, 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 he was torture people. Even, for, here's what he remember, is. Remember, betraying the people you tr uh, that trust you makes you cunning. Oh, like, just, the, the thing is that with Ramsey, he Ramsey is um, chaotic stupid. He is stupid evil. Chaotic yeah. stupid. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, before, before the um, stupid evil alignment. That's his alignment. He does evil things because it's lol so random. Funny evil. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah, it's just go okay, so um oh great. So uh this is so frustrating. Alrighty. So. Before before we move on, sorry, uh I know I'm a walking tangent machine, but I feel like even if they just copied uh shit, can't remember the characters, the other inbred guy from uh from Can from Camelot. No, from Camelot or whatever, uh King Arthur's tale. Um, oh, if they just Mordred? copied that, that would have been way better. Mordred? I, I'm going to take your word for it. Yes, I, it's been a while. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the... Yeah, it would be Mordred. Yeah, it would be Mordred. Mordred, yeah. Mordred? Yeah. Like, so... at, at least he had some semblance of wanting to overcome his, like, he had something. He had a second dimension. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, it's frustrating to say the least. So, Game of Thrones broke many records during its eight seasons. Mm -hmm. Not oh. all of them good. He broke. Oh, they, they broke the the record for the show that died the quickest. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> I, I just agree. It died over the season five through eight. It was always it was dying. I was through. talking about from the culture referral yeah. perspective. Oh. Like the oh. Fair yeah. enough. Um. Okay, so it, here's an interesting thing. Okay, so lo it has the record for longest consecutive torture of a character in filmed entertainment. That's cold not... entertainment. Are you talking about the audience? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. so it, it's okay. okay. So he's Theon is captured by Roose Bolton's bastard son Ramsay at the end of season two and doesn't escape his clutch until the end of season five. In between, nearly every time Throne shifted to Theon's storyline, the traitor's former Stark Lord was enduring yet another novel form of physical torture or mental anguish at the hands of his sadistic keeper. Yeah, and Ramsay's just kind of a kind of a cartoon in a lot of ways. Well, what qualifies as torture? Because I would argue that Sansa was tortured from season uh, from season one to season five. Well, I guess it's like consecutive, like. Like maybe it's just like it that is consecutive. What when is she ever not in a pathological relationship from the for those seasons? That is true. Season six is kind of the first time, I guess. Yeah. But then she becomes the pathological person. Yeah. But yeah. then she just knows things that she shouldn't know. I didn't and, have... and forgets things that she should know. Like, well, at least oh, she doesn't wait. forget. A, well, at least she doesn't oh, wait. just kind of forget. My we're, we're spending the entirety of the season picking up, uh, like picking up like forty-two people from Bear Island. When I have a fucking dude who's in love with me in the Vale, family from the Vale, who has five thousand knights. But I guess uh, she just forgot about that. Hey, hey, we we needed that dramatic entrance yeah. at the end, so we can do that. Danny just forgot about that for uh, uh. seven episodes. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god, that's so dumb. Yeah. They did that as early as six. Yeah, it's <sighs> yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. Oh, I just they have a justification for that. It's friggin' stupid. But what is it? Oh, just wait, just wait. Uh -huh. Oh, just I'm wait. Listening. Oh, great. Yeah. Essentially, like it's an outplaying. They outplayed Littlefinger, and it's great symbology because. <laughs> oh my god! It's self awareness is absolutely in the neg absolutely in the fucking negatives. How can you outplay someone whose motivations you don't understand? Uh, yeah, you, you have a literal cheat device, but then again, yeah. that doesn't mean anything because there's no proof. I don't know how that. Ugh. Just, yeah, everybody yeah. just leaves Bran. Isn't, isn't Littlefinger supposed to be like the most cunning person in the entire show? Well, yeah, but then he knows. kind of forgot he was, and then he died. <laughs> then he kind so of forgot that Littlefinger the, was cunning. <laughs> so basically, it's the Thrawn syndrome. Oh my goodness! Have you seen the latest episode of Mandalorian? I don't watch the Mandalorian. I think yes, Thrawn comes back. Uh, oh no! Let me see, Mandalorian. Thrawn. Don't, oh fuck! I, I, damn. I don't. Oh, sorry, people. I don't have. Uh, oh no! Hopefully, this tangent is very small. But uh, Thrawn's here. Actually, uh, my <laughs> girlfriend's uh, cousin tried to say that the Mandalorian took place during the Mandalorian Wars. <laughs> no, it's right before the what? sequel trilogy. <laughs> so, that, wow. That's that's, that's kind, kind of bad. Of in, that's kind of insane. Uh, Mandalorian Wars. No, I believe 3, that. Three years before. Yeah, uh -huh. that takes place before Ganon. <laughs> right. Sorry for that tangent, but I just found. No, that it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it kind of is. It is laughable. Yeah. So okay. So uh, he's so behind the scenes. Theon's. Uh, Pitch Black years long arc took its toll on actor Alfie Allen, um, who couldn't help but absorb at least some degree of his character's misery. Okay. Um, Storylines launched when he betrays Rob Stark in season two. He sees, Winter, sees Winterfell in order to please daddy. Uh, Brandon Rickon escaped. Then Theon murders two orphan boys to for preferring to trick the newly conquered subjects of Winterfell that they're the two Stark boys, when in the reality they're not, rather than admit that he'd lost uh, some really valuable hostages. Kind of appropriate that the actor's name contains the word oaf. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Alfie mm -hmm. Allen, yeah. Alfie no, Allen. I thought it was Ophie, my bad. Yes, yeah, sorry. Alfie. Uh, yeah. Alfie, well, damn it. The, yeah. it, it, it Alf, you know Alf? Yeah, think. that's that's still fine, but I thought it was Ophi. That would have been amazing. Yeah, that would have been a funny. 
Uh, well, just, I wouldn't be surprised if people had called him Alfie the Oaf as a kid. Maybe. To um, bully him. I don't know. He's kind of attractive, so. Yeah. I was like thinking with this. Yeah. As a kid. Yeah. Yes, even more so. Yeah. 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 So, one constant thread. That's so, like Walder Frey, Theon feared that any perception of weakness would prove his downfall. Yep. Yeah. So, one constant thread is Martin's book. In Martin books, is that achieving power is difficult, but maintaining power is much harder. Harder. Um, it's perhaps even impossible, particularly without the world or being corrupted, as King Robert said in Martin's. Martin's uh, Game of Thrones. Sitting on a throne is a thousand times harder than winning one. It's a lesson Theon learned painfully. So, sitting wise, on a throne is harder than winning a throne. I disagree. Mm. I would. I, I think at least like in some part it is because, like, it's you have to consistent. How much ruling did Robert really do? I, well, yeah, exactly. Robert was a terrible throne sitter. Joffrey was a terrible throne sitter. Um, yeah, but people constantly die trying to climb climb to the actual throne. I feel like once they're there, it's actually easier, even if you're terrible at it and get murdered 10 years later. At least you're not being murdered 10 months into the pursuit. Eh. Yeah. True. Look how long it took uh, Baelish to get to get relatively close to the throne then now he's stupid now so it makes sense because we wrote it that way so it makes sense i'm never getting over that stupid yeah. comment that he made yeah let's let's continue um uh okay so uh it's a so Theon is like Gollum in Lord of the Rings. He's the most shadowy character. No, he's not. That's Tywin. You're clearly... Mm. I, I just, like, I disagree with that fundamentally. Uh, how is Tywin shadowy? Because Tywin Lannister is, like... Like, he's... Like, uh, the Red Wedding alone is kind of a, a shadowy thing mm. where he's able to do this really awful thing and manages to um like mainly get away with it and the only thing that kind of gets him is his son decides i've had enough of your abusive bs dad i i feel like he's his uh pursuits are a little more straightforward the pursuit of his house i feel yeah. like in order to be shadowy it has to be something you can't quite figure out in that in that regard i feel like uh yeah. baelish is more shadowy yeah. i would say at least from my, what i understand of the books i would say uh varus is the most shadowy <laughs> yeah, actually, yes actually yes that is actually actually yes that is, that is, mm -hmm. is the case. I, I would say yes but what he says is he's not good but he's not really even e evil either that okay. what no okay. no that but okay, uh, creatively it makes made the most narrative sense to us. David Dingus Benny awful. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> what 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 qualifies as evil though? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't know if he's evil. He's definitely self centered, like to the to the billionth degree. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Here. So he's not really evil either. He's done a lots of really bad, but also understandable choices. Says he wanted. Are we still we talking want. about Lannister? No. 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 no, no. no. Baelish. Theon. 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 I thought we were on Baelish. Uh, no, we're on. No. Like. I'm wait. They claim that on. Theon is the most shadowy figure. Yes. What? Yeah, but they're terrible people. <laughs> They're really terrible at everything. He's the most blatant right? moron, like, like, just, if you insult me, I'll curtail to your whims. Oh, you, you, you missed it. You, you missed it. They try to compare, like, uh, John Snow to Harry Potter. 
like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that didn't work <laughs> at all. <laughs> the situations are completely different. Well, there is the illusion of the chosen one that John was supposed to potentially be, but I guess that's mostly about that's it. Season one. That's season one. No, I think you could argue up until like season seven. Well, it was, well, I mean, it was like, supposed to be him. Until the Night King got killed by fucking Arya, I would say it was arguable that uh, that Jon Snow was could yeah. be the chosen one. Yeah, he wasn't but, our best leader, but yeah, luckily it's I took him his place. And, it's between him and Danny. They were supposed to be, one of them or both were supposed to be the chosen one. Yeah. If that even actually existed. But well, yeah, it was to be to it, but it was actually expected, so we couldn't do it. Yeah, that, that's the closest I could see how he's Harry Potter. Yeah, but it's kind of like they were saying that he was like Harry Potter in season one, like a, as part of a prank. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not kidding. These people, they're not pranksters, they're bullies. Yeah. They, not even good pranksters. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Go on, go on, my bad. Yeah, I, I just, am now caught up. Yeah, he just said, yeah, they said, like, uh, yeah, also it's kind of the part where they say Tywin Lannister is lawful neutral. Mm. No, he's not. I feel like Tywin doesn't fall into the classic D and D uh, nine part. Uh, I think he's too complicated to fit into that. We were going. He's more uh, neutral lawful. evil than lawful. He's neutral evil. Yeah, um, I don't think he's evil. I think he. Well, not evil. Well, like... he's certainly not new lawful. Lawful he's not neutral. he's not lawful, he's not neutral, evil, or good. I feel like he just doesn't fit there. What if you had to put him in the category? Which one would you put him in then? Yeah. Um, Closest. Because it's certainly not neutral lawful. I would say Quentin. neutral neutral. I think he's right down the Quentin center. Martin, he, well, no, there's only three. You can't make up Quentin, one. No, there's Quentin. there's it's nine. He's uh neutral what's the middle one? Neutral neutral? Quentin Martel. True neutral. True neutral. True true neutral. neutral. He's, he's true neutral. He cares about himself. I feel like true neutral is kind of the whole uh, self-serving thing. You're not inherently evil. You're not inherently good. You're looking out for your own predefined interests. It's kind of yeah. uh, he's kind of a Nietzschean character. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't exist in the show. Everything is utilitarian to him. It's all about achieving his ultimate goals whether that's good or evil he doesn't care mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep and whether so. it's underhanded or lawful he'll do whatever it takes or not takes he'll do whatever is most likely to lead to the result he wants and that just means that they don't understand what the alignment how the alignment system works yes also i hate the alignment system that's why my RPG does not include that. Smart. Yeah, anyway. mine actually is more closely related to goals and the big five. You know, ocean. Am I am I alone here? Yeah, I I, I don't know. Oh, just yeah. uh, ocean, the big five. Let me Google it real quick. Big five personality. So. It is or not test traits. Little bitch. Fuck you, Google. Yeah. Um, it is, it is uh, extroversion, agreeableness, openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. Hmm. Okay. So. Um, that would certainly work. Yeah, so, it's way better than like categorizing people. It's more specific. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, so here we have. So with regarding Theon, he want he wanted to be taken seriously, achieve things, make his dad proud. Um, what? No. No, he thought his dad was a little piece of shit. He thought his dad was a little beta bitch boy. Uh, kind of. Well, like, he, Theon is a beta. beta. Oh, god damn it. I thought we were still talking about uh, Tywin. <laughs> yeah, moving on. God damn yeah. it. Yeah, Tywin. Yeah, Tywin. Yeah, Darn, yeah, you I, need to clarify more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, said, I, I did say regarding Theon. Oh, no. Well, I'm, it's not that he made a mistake. It's that I'm stupid. Oh. <laughs> 
I'd say yeah. Theon cares about looking good to everyone. He doesn't care who it is. It's more of an immediate thing. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, it was, it's, so all of those Theon's desires led him to um, do a really, do this, uh, do these terrible things, do a lot of terrible things, and he reaped Westeros karma. It's, there's something universal about Theon. Okay. Um, one of my favorite scenes I wrote was in season two, according to Brian Cogman, when Theon wrote a letter to Rob Buzz betraying his own father, and he changed his mind and burned the letter. We weren't really sure if we could pull it off because it's a short scene with no dialogue, but you put that camera on Alfie and everything you need to know is behind the eyes. Again, with the, these performances, it's, it's, these faces. faces. Oh season, my god, I hate this? that already we should put that on a t-shirt and sell it there we go yeah. there's, your, there's your first merchandise idea tptf yeah. it's, it's kind it's of uh, cut, right i feel like a great shirt would be danny kind of forgot to to like make this label or something <laughs> <laughs> we kind of, we kind of all, forgot to finish this shirt we kind, we kind of, of forgot, forgot how to write, write the story <laughs> yeah, we, we, we kind of forgot how to write. Yeah. 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 We kind of forgot to draw the, the, the picture on the shirt. <laughs> yeah. We kind of yeah. forgot to. We kind of forgot the shirt. <laughs> you could just, just send a. You could just, so just send a letter to the customer saying. Just, just make it a crop top. Danny kind of forgot to use the shirt. <laughs> yeah. You, you send the money in, in the mail, you just get a note. Well, we kind of forgot about the shirt. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. You could make like a crop top that said Danny kind of forgot to finish the shirt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that anyway, was the, like ahead. the best meme of the show. All right, continue. Yeah, All right. We're ready. So. Alrighty, so okay, word. but just everything is behind the eyes. It's just that's a consistent thing that Cogman has said, and it's just really frustrating to say the least. Um, and it's just so annoying to me. So, alrighty, so Theon was caught in an ultimate no win situation betray his best friend or his fan. He just have to betray his friend or his family. What? People will well, betray his best friend or his no, family. he lost by going to his family. If, or his old family. If he stayed with his new, his like more recent family, he would have won. Well, he'd probably be dead, but it was more likely to have him win. This is true. This is very true. He took a, he literally took a risk to protect his pride. Mm hmm. Exactly. And the risk was uncalculated and stupid. Yes, it was very stupid. He was able to take with Winterfell, but not hold it. That's the thing. Oops, I hope I didn't open the back of this. Yeah. Let me put it away. I see now why this is eight parts so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, we yeah. are mini fab. Mini yeah, fab. we're like, yeah, we're about halfway through. We're, well, Ooh. we're or less than halfway through. It's yeah, we're, we're, we're almost. We're almost through a regular EFAP introduction. It's EFAT every frame of uh, tangent. Yeah. 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 And well, the thing is, like, we're trying to keep it, like, relatively focused. We try to, we do keep it relatively focused. I am not contributing to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, sometimes they go on tangents for several minutes. Uh, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be back in a bit. I'm going to make some tea. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, you nasty Brit. Alrighty. So, Oi, I'm drinking tea too. Dunn have become. I am Jackson, sir. I am the American of America. Dunn have become <laughs> Mauler. Um, <laughs> and I am a I, mean, I did make a Malachi meme. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, that's impressive. How dare you call me a great you fucking commie? <laughs> I am a zombie. I have no idea what that means. Mm. Oh, well, no. I do have a slave army, so that maybe that counts. Mm. 
I'll hey, um, we like to do a lot of this dragon die. Hey, look, I got a dragon glass knife right here. No. Uh, no. Uh, done this to Milly many more. I wish, I wish I could make as much money as Mahler does off of YouTube. Like, that way, that way we can actually afford Balerians in White's intros. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just the thing. The th he's just, he's freaking rich. Like, Mahler, yeah, like, maybe. just off of Super Chats, can live off of, like, that for the rest of, for most, the rest of his life. Just considering, like, he has to, like, go for hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours hours yes then then we can have my intro in 480p this time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep so like subscribe and comment so he can get monetized so he can get yeah. Yeah. Super yes chat. please 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 <sighs> yeah, yeah so no way i'm supposed to be dead yeah yeah come on i was like a little cut yeah like a paper cut so uh people see the as a Theon is a traitor, but he, if he had let that letter to Rob, his homeland would have thought of him as a traitor, not to excuse him of his wrongdoings. Okay. So, uh, Alfie and Alan. I think my character is really severely misguided. He was just a boy, really. He's a, he's a, I think there was, a nice, there was a nice guy down there. He just had no one teach him the ways of the world and tell him right from wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a pro that's that's correct. That's that works. Mm -hmm. Well, well, except for Ned in uh, in the we Winterfell. That is actually true. You're right. Huh. Okay. Well, you did probably. I don't know how much like Ned taught Theon, but maybe like he just since Theon's kind of a a little kind of a little dick in a lot of ways. I believe you're looking for the term "lethal shit." I don't swear, but so, but that works. <laughs> well, that's, that's, uh, they're both. Yeah, mm. either one will do. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, okay. So he observed it, but had not been told it. Okay, that works. He was just trying to prove himself. It's a universal theme for people, whether people deny it or not. Hot. Um, okay. So, okay. So, uh, he just had no one to on the ways of the world. Um, so he was just trying to prove himself. It's a universal thing for anyone, whether people, okay, you're always looking for your parents' approval, even if you're not looking for it, you kind of are. As part of the torture regimen, um, or should we admit, the bastard of Bolton castrated Theon. It was a scene that even thrown, flinched away from showing on screen. Thank you for doing yes. that. Thank I you for small favors. Yeah, thank you for small favors. What did they flinch away from showing? Castrating him. On yeah, screen. thank you for just. Wow, this is a small yeah. favor. Here, have a salt. Here's a here's a grain of gratitude. Wow, some st form of standard. Holy crap! Holy crap! You actually yeah. don't think you should show castration? Standards are racist. Ah, epid. Oh, wow. How are you Take changing your profile? I just hope it wasn't real. Huh? How are you changing your picture this quickly? <laughs> I don't know. It white never ever the sorcery. Huh? I said white oh, dragon. Hey, white dragon. Oh crap, he's living. I need to make. Oh crap, he's living again. Hey, oh, no. uh, you switch uh, between a dragon and David Benioff and back in like three that's seconds. Why, this is Weiss. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, I'm a king now. How are you doing oh, this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing is, I think what he's doing is that he's, is that he can, to use he has his audio avatar open at all times, so he could just swift on the, so he could just swiftly change it on the fly. Yeah. Stop it. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Look how swift I am. So, now I'm Wolf. Now I'm me. Now I'm right. Zaya. Alrighty. So, Alfie Allen, I felt the castration was very appropriate because it's a huge change for any man to go through, but for Theon, it's his only weapon in the world of thrones. 
He only had power and authority in the bedroom because it, he'd never had the decisions to make over his own life. To have that stripped mm -hmm. away from him, it left him with nothing, it, but only male male fans seemed to mention it. No women ever mentioned it, which made me laugh. The mutilation mm -hmm. was like Jamie losing his sword hand, a sinful man being deprived of the part of him from which he wielded power over others. Okay. You know, I don't hate that. That's actually a pretty good analysis yeah. of why it yeah, matters. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's um, interesting, at least. Yeah, I don't think that was the only manner in which he held power. I feel like it was the only thing in which he took pride. That is, a, I think that's a very good point. Yeah. White, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, forcing him to re-examine his life and build new reservoirs of strength. If they really did understand the themes with which they were working, they should have said pride because that's why he was became a turncoat is because his pride was threatened yeah yeah he, he doesn't know who he yes. is as a person so he switched to back to his father because he saw some sort of potential higher positioning it, it's one of the reasons why even though i'm not a fan of the books or the show i think the romance between rob and his wife uh was cute out of Character. Oh, Sion had a wife. Oh, Rob, Rob Stark. Yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. I didn't know his yeah. name was Robin. I thought it was like Rob. Yeah, Rob. Oh, Stark. Rob. I'm sorry. I thought you said Robin. Mm -hmm. No. That would actually be really weird if Rob married a girl named Robin. <laughs> that would have been funny, actually. What if actually he is? Nick, or if actually they're just hiding, trying to hide the fact that his birth name is actually Robin. This Neff, this is actually important to me now. What you don't like the show at all? Not even season one through four. She's never seen that. No, I. Oh, no. what? She... I've seen bits and pieces, and I've seen all of Rob's uh, storyline. But Let's pretend it it's... ends at season four, and you'll be happier. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Sorry, as season four ends, so yeah, end of season four. Yeah, I think that she um. Well, um, she actually finds the... She has stated this before. She has found the show bloody and violent. Wait, Neff, you don't like blood? It's... I don't mind a little blood and gore, but it's excessive. too much. Yeah, it's excessive. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. Indulgent. So, yeah. It's yes. it, it gets indulgent in the later seasons as well. Yeah. Well, that's because they all... That's because that's all they have. They think what shock gore, they, well, here's what they have. Yeah. They have violence, sex, and cursing. Dude, yeah. the newer the newer HBO shows are just fucking ridiculous with how much like sex and blood they're doing. It's like they're they're uh -huh. almost literally showing porn. Hmm. Which, you know, I have no problem with, but it doesn't really have that great place in storytelling. No, no it doesn't. Are. Especially yeah, if there are kids watching HBO. Well, no one should be. No kid should be watching HBO. But well, I feel like yeah. the uh, HBO. sex and whatnot. HBO. Well, HBO doesn't have a kids section, surprisingly. Well, I would think not. Um, but I feel like if you're gonna like, some people say you shouldn't so show sex because uh, the connection is the important part. I disagree. I feel like showing the sex can kind of bring it back to reality in a sense because. Mm -hmm. It is an expression of what they're doing. So, for example, if you're fucking a whore versus fucking egret, then that's important. So you can bring it back to reality by showing so many things that a then anime. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I, 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 I feel like you distracted. Go ahead. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, I feel, let's I feel like you. I feel like you can. Uh, like, yeah, let's the, everything in its proper place. But when you're just like showing porn to be edgy, it's kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's how you show to be porn. It's like, here's I show mature. Look at this man, <laughs> look at this woman. Here's your pizza please. audience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it gets oh, it just so. Um, so Theon's sister Yara received a box containing her brother's severed genitals that. Ramsey sent their father bail on. The audience didn't see what was inside, just Yara's gravely disturbed expression. The box wasn't empty, though. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, so Gemma Whalen. The only thing I could say is that the props department did him proud. They definitely um, filled the box. 
Oh. <laughs> oh God. I hope it wasn't real. <laughs> I, 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 it's like the performance uh, these faces. No, what can you expect? So, so they real. actually put a. Prop I, it, it's like the, the, oh my god, that's going a little bit too far. It's like Pulp Fiction. They put the, they, they, you just put a, like a light in there and you get to imagine what it is. And they put an equivalent and they put the equivalent of a professional dill dildo in there. I would oh like to gosh. think that in Pulp Fiction the, the prize was actually Theon's penis. <laughs> yeah, at least it wasn't at least it wasn't real. <laughs> with, these lot, with this lot, you can never be sure. No, it was yeah. my yeah. Cool. yeah, you really can't be. Yeah, you can. It's well, I would not have wanted actually, to be her. Well, you see, the reason that they would they tried to do it because it will improve their acting performance. Yeah, like no, that's. Oh my! <laughs> uh, Seventy life. <laughs> We're back at the Seventy Life Horses thing. I will uh, always bring it back to penises. <laughs> I am the king now, so I say no. Penises. All right, all right, I'll get my pants off. Just you wait. I, I don't have any pants on right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am always ready. I I live with my family, so I'm not. Uh, I'm uh, not. Uh, uh, going commandos. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I'm not actually. I'm talking about my avatar. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I got the wrong avatar for this. Well, <laughs> well no, uh, it's it's you do you, buddy. I don't care. <laughs> well, like, sometimes I like to play with humans. Sometimes you know, you, you yeah, get what you so, can get. You know. Okay, so, um. Mr. Okay, so Mel, Mr. Allen filming a lot of the torture scenes had an effect on him, mm -hmm. and he tried to express the cumulative effect of abuse on his uh, of Ramsey's abuse on his body when he was on screen. Um, oh wow, we have like twenty people watching. Nice. Yep. Yep. How many likes? Sixteen likes so far. Yeah, we're doing. Hello, good. the twenty people. How you do? For the fact that he had to keep <laughs> pretending that he like he had to keep acting as a person being tortured, I feel like he kind of delivered. I mean, uh, he he, I he cried very well. Yeah, he did. He cried extremely well. It's like it's like he actually killed someone on the screen. He was like, "Oh no, that was a joke." Yeah, this so, is a snuff um, TV. That, that was a that, bad joke. Oh, well, I don't think that the on. Um, I don't think that he does. To be perfectly honest. He could just become a lesbian. I don't think that he <laughs> but does. There's something there. I, I, it's kind of it's heavily implied that he does not have his j his junk. He saw okay, his well, I, I have a, well, he definitely doesn't have it in the trunk. No. Hey, you see, I have a lot experience with this part the next. I can tell you all about it. Oh. Anyway, yeah. my bad. That was Oh crazy. yeah. Uh, in a few years, those phrases will be used in classes on how not to do storytelling, and we shall be teaching the younglings. <laughs> oh, yes. if I'm, not, I'm not teaching nobody. I'm going to be. If I'm going to be teaching, I'm not going to be sober doing it. The Game thing is, is, The Last Jedi is already being taught in schools on how not to write a story. Uh -huh. yeah. Game of Thrones is educational. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, let's um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, so Alfie Allen, okay, great, more and um, more these performances. Well, actually, not not so much. This is actually the actor himself, like putting thought into his performance. So this is not bad. So, but it's still an actually no, no way. It is indicative because they're not giving deliberately not giving him dialogue. All right. So dialogue is overrated. Yeah. Now they yeah. need to give him the internal thoughts of the character instead of actual yeah. dialogue. So okay, so what we need to do is just have the character not talk at all. Okay, so Alfie Allen said uh, I had to do more telling the do more telling a story with my eyes than words. Okay, 
since he had the nail driven to his foot, I added a l little bit of a limp. My posture in my back, I tried to ACAF, arch out, and bring my shoulders back together. I wanted to replicate the feeling of being on, on the cross in a way. Uh, there were so many times when it was tough, it, and if you were to ask me, gosh, how much of can it, more can a character take? And I say, I don't know. Alfie Allen. Um, Alfie would be screaming, then laughing. He'd have to scream and scream and scream. And then if he didn't laugh, then we would laugh because, you know, he's Alfie. Okay. Mm, that, um, that's actually really interesting. The slumped shoulders is, like, biomechanically is interesting because uh, if you had to strain with the, with those muscles, that is what would happen because when you have overemphasized back muscles, your, uh, um, your shoulders roll very far back. If you have overemphasized chest muscles, which is the one, which are the ones that would be stretched on a cross, then uh, you would have slumped shoulders forward because yeah. those are the muscles pulling it. Um, well, the thing that I'm pulling from is kind of the idea that Theon has the ability to, like, they, Theon is told, hey, um, uh, you need to, like, get her ready. And he's like, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't. And he's like, with your mouth, Reek. And that's kind of the main thing where I think, oh, that's, that explains why. The, uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's, uh, at least to me, that seemed like he's, he's, yeah, he's, that definitely been cat castrated. The, the shoulder thing, I actually didn't even notice. Maybe he needs to take some uh, notes from Joaquin Phoenix, from yeah. Freddie Quell, the master. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, uh, Alfie Allen, Ramsey Bolton, actor Ewan Ruin, and I are really good friends, and we spent a lot of time together. Um, he beat me to the, at pool. He beat me at pool many nights uh, when we're out. People literally could not get the, their heads around the fact that we were hanging out. <laughs> uh, that whole Santa storyline is completely dumb. I was like, I was just thinking about it when we, when we were talking yeah. about it. Yeah. So we were we get the Belfast locals, locals saying, saying it losing their minds oh. over the fact that it's Theon and Ramsey. Okay. So, Dave Hill, a co-producer, who was an assistant who became one of the writers slash co-producers. It's really weird why they why they like make these guys co-producers. I don't get why this decision was made. Um. So, okay, so, ap so Dave Hill after Theon. Escaped. I asked Al Alfie Allen, Allen, and what it finally felt to be free of Ramsey. Ramsey, uh, he said, "You don't even understand. Those three seasons after I was castrated and had to play Reek was were really hard on me emotionally." Oh, uh, he's friends with Ruin, and he said it would strain their friendship. After a day of playing, playing Reek, he, they would shoot, go shoot pool, and he couldn't beat him. They would weirdly slip back into their on-camera interaction where Ewan would be a little bossy and Alfie would shrink back. His character started to bleed into his personal life. Oh, that's disturbing. Yeah, that's yeah. not good. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Subsequently, he became a sub. Yeah, that's... that's. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. That's very, very creepy. Oh my god, these are lovely people and this is happening to them? Ugh. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You are a lady of excellent taste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Matt uh, Warren was he, he, not even that great. Yeah. If that's what she's referring to. I find the yeah. question. I find the value of Matt Warren questionable. Yeah, it's uh, like, it. it's like I, I remember talking with somebody and they're like, they're pointing out that the Mandalorian is using um, Legends materials. They're starting to use more Legends materials. Because they don't have any other options. And it's done. Apparently they want to reboot the entire Star Wars. They, they want to reboot yeah. their Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, pretend as if the, um, pretend as if what happened didn't happen. And they just 
they're probably used, and according to him, they're using this material to test the waters to see how people react. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, Alfie Allen, it seeped, it start, definitely seeped into real life. I, uh, it got you down. You'd, you you had to use it. I'm not going to lie. It was really hard. The character went through so many crazy changes. Theon is one of the most human characters on the show. The Greek aspect really amped up his pain and suffering. But for me as an actor, it was great to tackle, excuse the pun. Um, as Theon suffered under Ramsay's control of Dreadfort, Arya and the Hound were on road trip that would conclude with some screaming as well. The duo was a very uh, captivating, odd, odd couple pair, pairing. The Hound teaching sent Arya the savage way of the world. world well, Arya inspired the Hound to rediscover some of his lost humanity. Okay. Um, she Arya has is a character who um, had. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. You and me both. I, I ended up watching it just kind of like because my family was watching it. I was just like, this is kind of fun, but it's just kind of, but there's also kind of just like, I'm just thinking about it and picking it apart and I'm just like, ouch, this is not a very good movie. If, if mm. you keep up, if you keep him off of creative decisions, as far as like plot goes, I feel like he's quite good. I mean, he did, he did a, quite a good job with the looper script because he was not involved in the, creation of the plot hmm. yeah I imagine. anything so. else just keep him away from i've heard so many horrible things about him that i just don't want to watch any of his movies hey, ever abrams is no better no well looper is good uh it's seven out of ten pretty darn good there's plot holes fairly decently sparse throughout there uh we're not even all of them regarding the, the time travel but yes the time travel the time travel is done quite poorly. Uh, it's done interestingly from a character perspective, but not from a plot perspective. Yeah. Uh, Which is more than you can say about his uh, Last Jedi fiasco. Yeah, this is true. Anyway, so uh, Arya is a character who is driven by a. I had a core of her life. Uh, ripped from her uh, and she existed in a very dark place as a child this is accurate uh okay she's driven by revenge and hate she's got a great mentor and mentor in revenge and heartlessness in the hound okay. mm. hound. Um, mentor is a strong word but i can kind of see where they're going yeah, he rubbed, they rubbed off on each other in ways that weren't or unexpected. I, Freezing! <laughs> yeah, that was my... Freezing! Uh, oh I, my I god, Freezing! Freezing! <laughs> I was going to say, thank you, thank you enough for saving me from being the one who has to make those jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Phrasing, yeah. Phrasing, <laughs> yeah, it's very... It's a very... Even worse because of the uh, tavern scene. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Maybe he ate her chicken. Freezing. Yes, that was the, that was the intent. <laughs> it, it dirty mouth. It, 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 <laughs> clean up your dirty mouth. Mouthful of chicken. Am I right? Hey oh. <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll don't let me get horny brat. <laughs> Yep, right back. This is the horny be gone, Pat. Yeah. Well, what can you do? So, Maisie Williams, she learned a lot from the Hound. She's like a sponge and heavily influenced out by the people around her. Around her. Being next to the Hound, she learned brutal, his brutal ways. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, okay. So. Okay. So, uh, George R. R. Martin, co-executive producer and author. The also chemistry... Uh... So... What? Okay, so he said... So, George R. R. Martin, the chemistry between Maisie and Rory was brilliant. Arya and the Hound in the end. I'm going to have to eat every frickin' chicken, chicken in this place. I had a version of that scene in the books, 
but I didn't have those great lines. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, that's, that's actually I weird. actually I think his lines might have been better, personally. Yeah. Oh, uh, actually, no. Like, I don't think they were. I, I think that like Rory McCann kind of just has a talent for like delivering excellent lines. Okay. Lines. He just kind of has a natural like ability to, um, like deliver. Uh, what is it like? Excellent thought. Like certain bits of dialogue that like make a whole are just absolutely like memeable and quotable and it's kind of fascinating because I, he doesn't really say very much like very much that i remember in the book but he says it so about whom are we speaking sorry i got distracted rory mccann the guy who plays the hound ah uh, yes yes mm -hmm. i've only seen him in one work hot buzz is he really in Hot Fuzz? Was he? Oh, yeah. don't tell me. Yeah, he was he uh, Yarp? Yarp. Oh my God, that's amazing. Hmm. A yarp. Yarp. That's well. That kind of describes his the Hound character in a little bit, in some ways. Yeah. Narp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, the only way to be a Yarp yeah. and Yarp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's this moment where um Nick or um, Nick has to uh, yes Nicholas Nicholas has to guess what uh, you would say he, and he says narp mm -hmm. yeah so um Rory McCann say so struggled with playing the hound during the early seasons trying to get the right balance between fearsomeness and soul and a scarred warrior okay so one day, David Nutter gave him a simple piece How of. How did they cover up their scar in Hot Fuzz? I don't know. Because he got. I really don't know. Oh. Um, he's. I'm very confused. What? I'm... How, how did uh, How did the half actor cover up the scar when he was in Hot Fuzz? <laughs> I think Hot Fuzz came before Game of Thrones. Yeah, but like Hapthor Bjornsson gave it to him when he was like five, so. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's funny. Uh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Um, well, are you almost done for today? Um, not quite. Um, done is far from being done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, done, done. sorry. So, okay, so uh, Brian Cogman, David really unlocked something for Rory. He told him to channel Clint Eastwood, that he doesn't have to act scary, just the flattest, simplest line read, and it will speak volumes. Yeah, no! I'm Actually, sorry, it depends on what kind of... <laughs> I'd say it works. I would say that it works yeah. for the Hound. I'd say it works for the Hound. I think that's fine. Yeah, but my think, my well, objection I, is, what if it hadn't worked? Well, I think like... Well, it didn't. Or sorry, well, it, it did work. I think the thing with it is, there's an element of the, um, like, it works for certain characters. I think that it works fine with how they did um, with with Rory McCann, I think that it works fine. I think that it works fine. Um, but there's still an element of it's... A, Enforced I, method acting. Yeah, it, it is. So, next, let's... Like go. Charles Dance, in a way? Kind of like that? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. You can just talk normally and sound like Tywin. Like, even in interviews, he sounds the same. Yeah, he kind, of, he kind of does sound like Tywin. He does sound like Tywin. Um, yeah. He was perfectly casted. Yeah. yeah he was, he was we will never casted. see his likes again. Nope. Is he dead? No, well, no. Tywin Lannister. Yeah, I know Tywin's dead, but people die. Aegon died. Yeah. Yeah. I deny it. You're stuck tonight, my, my fantasy's existence. Yeah. So, 
So uh, there was a marked difference from then on in terms of how Rory approached the Hound. So Rory said um, of it, first couple of years, I was very nervous all the time that I found the character. I just look in the mirror and go, oh, crap. There's no F. There's no reason to play scary. No wonder this little girl is frightened of me. Less is more. Yeah. So... Okay, so uh, Rory was challenged by the heavy uh, facial prosthetics, which was never an struggle on set. He spent hours in the makeup chair before filming and had to wear the thick mask all day. The latest caused problems whether Game of Thrones was, swel was shooting in a sweltering desert, dot, dot, dot. Why exactly are you... S is there a dot, dot, dot there? It's like, I don't know, but I know that I'm not fond of... Uh... I'm not fond of makeup, so I don't wear it. But uh, for something like this, it would get fairly annoying. How, how do we pull one of the comments into the deal? Uh, right here. I think the gun is. How, how do you how do you do that? Uh, that's me. Just point it out, and I. Oh, uh, Mary Wilcox. It's full on fantasy. Yeah. Okay, you can't say that because it defined modern fantasy. That doesn't make sense. If you're talking about Lord of the Rings, it defined modern fantasy. Yeah, that's what so everything it, it, else is copying. Well, well I'm not, I'm not well, mad at her. Not, they're, they're having a debate about what the, uh, is uh, gritty realism. Um, but if it's, it has to be, well, I'm saying she's actually probably right. I'm saying her, the rings, her statement is almost a tautology because uh, I think she's right is what I'm saying, but it has to be full on fantasy because it defines the genre of fantasy in a lot of ways. So I would say that, yes, it is full on fantasy. Thus, it, and not, she's not only right because it's full on fantasy, taut tautologically, it's also correct. It's not gritty realism because Legolas surfs down a fucking shield on a staircase, <laughs> shooting multiple arrows <laughs> at, I, I would oh say God, gritty is shield surfing. I would say, I would say gritty <laughs> is not the way to oh, that's, find. You know, it. that's, that's Link's favorite activity to do. I would say gritty is not the yeah. the proper way to describe that. There are elements that are gritty, but uh, I would not describe Loader as a gritty gritty fantasy. Maybe The Witcher, yeah. perhaps not I not Loader. I would I would have find um. There's too, much hope. there's too much hopefulness. Surfing, I would not call gritty. I, I'd say there's too much hopefulness and too much uh, heroic oh, that's really, in, uh, really gritty. in mm -hmm. Loader to be considered gritty, per se. Sorry, tactician. or Yeah, tactician. I, I disagree with you. I think Mary is correct. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's very much... Well, high fantasy is very much a... Um, I don't even know if Loader is high fantasy. I think it's like middle well, of the road. Well, well, high fantasy is basically just well, the definition is basically it if it is something not of our world, it is high fantasy. I feel like high fantasy is more so like extravagance, like uh, Ravnica in uh, in Magic the Gathering or <laughs> World of Warcraft, uh, the citadels that they have, like something like building beyond what we have without the technology we have. I feel like the bet the closest we come to high fantasy in Lord of the Rings is like Gondor. Well, like well, and that's like, that's pushing it. Well, it's like it's well, it's like high fantasy is just it's a it set in a world that is not our own. Like but, I feel like but, that's just fantasy. Yeah, but 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 um, Westeros is also not in our world. It's a it's a, it's not even the same kind of planet. Middle Earth yeah. is a, on our planet. It's just yeah, really period. That, that's a great point. Yeah, um, Westeros is not high fantasy. It's not of our own, but it is definitely more grounded in reality than potentially like Ravnica or uh, not Kondratark here. That's not really a good example, but like Hard. things, like I said, just like things built beyond the scope of our comp current technological comprehension, built without our current technology. I feel like that's a great, a good way to define high fantasy. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not the author here. High <laughs> fantasy <laughs> equals isekai perfection. <laughs> right. Well, I think wouldn't that be more classic? Wouldn't that be classic fantasy? Which yeah, one? yeah. Wouldn't that like typical elves and forests? 
Mm. Yeah, I feel like Lord of the Rings is classical fantasy because it depends. It is, fantasy. yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that's what we take everything from yeah. now. Yeah. We I feel fantasy. I feel like higher low. Well, no, not The Witcher. The they Witcher hired is an old fantasy. Um, into but. Yeah, I feel like uh, fantasy, like exactly. whether it's high or low, is defined by relative positioning to Lord of the Rings. Honestly, I feel like there's Lord going, of the yeah, Rings is the definition of middle fantasy. Yeah, there's yeah, there's going to be either. Um, uh, it, Please it, no, God, say say it ain't so. There's no Lord of the Rings on Netflix. Don't tell me that. Not Netflix. Uh, oh, it's, God, it's not no. Netflix. Amazon. It's Amazon. That's even that's worse. Your... Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's uh, my definition. It comes out of whole little voice, and I absolutely despise it. Done. Yeah. You could be right, but that's my definition. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Yeah, also about that. Also, um, better. Did you also say it's also that's just yeah. Yeah. My, my bad for tangenting again. This is why I don't show up that often because I will derail you. No, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of subgenres. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's just on net. It's just on Amazon. It's not on Netflix. That would be awful. Oh God, well, yeah, yeah, because every, because I everyone don't... would be gay. Yeah, so like listen, you know, they would have a hot, steamy sex scene. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no. My girlfriend says she wouldn't be opposed, so now it's happening. <laughs> yeah. It probably involved Legolas and Aragorn or something. No, no, that, that's too conventional. You did no, just say that. You're thinking too conventional. You have to eschew all gender roles. Oh shit. Oh god. I know we'll make out with fucking Smeagol. That would be it. Do I, do, do I have to get involved? And then when Smeagol is uh, Smeagol, he's the sub, but when he's Gollum, he's the dog. No! Ew! Run along, run along. All right, right along. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, so, we're, just, so we're, moving on from one more topic to another. That's not even to mention the orcs. So moving from one gross topic to the next. No, um, we haven't even mentioned the half trolls yet. You're missing all these possibilities. Okay. No. So, we'll live okay. we'll, we'll without it somehow. <laughs> I did not need this. <laughs> I, I really did not need to hear that. that. <laughs> it's not the hey, image. Don't that me. It's not the don't image that me. you wanted, but it's the image that you needed right now. Uh, no, it's not. I'm, I'm uh, not sure about hey, that. Did someone here donate a bar of soap? <laughs> Can someone give me some nausea pills, please? Yeah, <laughs> we got a bar, like a whole, we need a whole pile of it, a whole pyramid yeah, of that. Let's keep, let's keep going. So, <laughs> yes. Rory McCann, um, so regarding Rory McCann's sweat, um, sweat and, under, uh, under his prosthetics, um, so, uh, okay, so oh, that's you, get this, you get this pool of sweat underneath the prosthetics, and the buildup of sweat can split the prosthetic prosthetic if it split there was this there was a reservoir of sweat that came pouring out a lot of shots had to be stopped just to squeeze out all the sweat and restart <laughs> oh god I well this is why you set up studios for this kind of thing well they did but it was just like they had to be like outside because of the nature of when they were filmed where they were filming like location shoot is not an, like an abnormal thing like it happens so oh, hopefully this tangent is too long i apologize for being a tangent machine but uh massive sorry. yeah from, from so i actually talked about the like the mask they're like fucking almost down the mask. what yeah they're almost like muscles. like like dripping out, like if you look like on their third song in the concert, it's just like pouring out the bottom of their masks. So that's my tangent. Hopefully Yikes. it doesn't go too far. Yeah. So or in the frozen tundra, Liam Cunningham, Davis Sewers, Rory had a terrible time in Iceland because the sweat underneath his prosthetic would turn to ice. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Wow. In what that you... case, I would say that it would be better to fix that in post than make them wear a mask like that. Oh, so don't, don't um, green so lanterns. No. So the sweat ice Swiss? Swiss. 
You be swiped. Be swiped. There we go. We're back. Oh, that's it. Swiss. Swiss. <laughs> Swiss. 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 No, I, I, I don't think that that post effects would work. That's just going to lead to another Green Lantern. DB DB Swice. Stop for picture changing. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I mean, I'm not saying story. that the that doing it in that post too. would be good, but you would certainly save the actor from getting sick. Did he actually get sick? I feel like he was just like. Very yeah. annoyed. Yeah. <sighs> Technically, the guy does. He's mostly done sitcoms for Wheel of Time. Apparent, more female centric. Yeah, I, I'm saying like the. I agree, Neil. Come on, what, are you afraid of some buff guys? Does like Conan even fight in a? Does like Conan fight a loincloth most of the time? I imagine like a lot of women would be like, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, a lot of like that's why Aquaman made a lot of money from the ladies who want to see oh, Jason yeah. Momoa without his shirt. Jason Momoa is a hunk of a band. <laughs> yes, like imagine like getting somebody with his body. A shirt completely shirtless for most of the time. <laughs> they were nothing yeah. but a loin cloth. A lot of women would be like, "Cool," and a lot of gay men would be like, "Yeah." Let's yes, I was about that. to say, so you were discounting <laughs> all all the bottoms of the world. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay, so in the and that was kind of um your. Which is not okay. His face was got encased in, in latex, which is not good. You could get gangrene from crap like that. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I said do it in post. I know mm. that it probably wouldn't look very good, but it would certainly well, save the actor from a lot of pain. Well, well, the dude who wore the who wore the thing costume was covered in that shit for like all of his performance. He was fine. I feel like he can get that, but they're Overseen by professionals. It's, I don't. Yeah, if you, if yeah, you. It's basically you cannot uh, abstain from uh, uh, like hardship for the actors. It's just mitigating that. Yeah, yeah. Because like, um, cause like you can, you can get stacked. You can get yeah. infected with a bunch of shit from rolling around with dudes in MMA. But you just take showers, and when you do get it, you treat it. I feel like that's not as huge a deal. Yeah, it's not. It's not a big problem. Okay. Yeah. It just kind of, it just happens. There's no preventing it. So playing the Hound's aloofness, however, came naturally for McCann. Those <laughs> actors uh, hang out at, after work. And Rory said, Ed, um, Ed, that for many years he declined to socialize with the rest of the cast. He was very, uh, Rory McCann, I'm very close to being the Hound. I was doing a, a scene with Christopher Hibju, uh, and he went to hug me as his character, and I said, don't touch me. Jesus. I'm so like that at home. I'm not used to human touch. I'm a bit of a recluse. Was, um, uh, I'm not... Uh, before each season, I phone all my friends and tell them I don't want to speak or have any contact with anybody at all before starting the job. It was only a, only in the couple of years, did I, final couple of years, I started talking to people who go out to be to pubs and be with the actors before that i was the weirdo who's just in my room or at the gym or just back home saying don't phone me until it's snowing <laughs> that's actually funny i like that um so uh his lone wolf tendencies had an unexpected pet act on williams not entirely unlike how the uh, the hound rubbed off on aria <laughs> Oh, That's freezing, amazing. freezing, freezing, freezing! <laughs> no. uh, oh. Please, oh my. what's your wording? Oh. You're forming God. even more fan fiction than there already is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my no. gosh. That is, oh. gosh. That is vile. Oh, that God. Is vile. Yeah. That, is, <laughs> that is unbelievable. What is this? The, the gross... Uh, is there really? That's amazing. 
Okay, so if there's Jesus and Muhammad fan fiction, there's definitely Arya and the Hound. Oh, I don't <laughs> doubt there. There's there's Arya and yes, it is. there's Arya Jon Snow fanfic. There's um, Sansa and Walder Frey fan fiction. I I know it exists. It's so creepy. <laughs> yes. Oh, it is. Is. My girlfriend's over here trying to justify. She's like, I feel like that just makes sense for them to have fucked. Uh, that's like, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well have. It doesn't make oh. sense for it to have fan fiction because she's 12. Look, look, look what you did. You, you killed me. I'm dead now. Okay, then you're one of those people who thinks that in anime it's okay if she looks five, but she's 100 years old. Therefore, no, it's not. It's the opposite way. No, it's the same. Uh, whatever. You stay over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's keep... Yeah. Oh, let's shit. My mic was on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're missing the point, uh, Becca Reb. It's well, Sansa dressed as Walder Frey. Fucking Walder Frey. This is where we need to get as a society. Yeah. Yes, yes we live in a society. <laughs> yes. Therefore. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on from that too, even though it's on topic. Yes. yes. <laughs> Let's keep going. So, um, so Maisie Williams, he would always chat with me about adventures he'd have in his life, uh, buying a piece of land and living in a bunker. All these crazy things he'd do in his life during the UFC seasons. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. Later, I was like, yeah, I bought a piece of land next to the sea and i realized wow you really shaped me a lot as a person uh macy williams saying this uh he realized a, a lot of his way of life does seem really appealing and i learned a lot from him i respect his friendship and loved working with him oh really cool Aww. yeah that's really cool um that's macy what one of williams favorite moments in the show was after the red wedding where Lan the hound tried to sell aria to her aunt lisa aaron only to discover Light Arya had, uh, Aaron had died too. Arya burst out laughing at the Hound's predicament and the absolute absurdity of her own misfortune. That is an excellent scene. Yes, it is very good. Hmm. Um, or an excellent um, arc too, not just the scene. Yeah, the very arc good arc. Quite. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah. So the whole so Maisie Williams this whole time he'd been giving Arya this. It's such a hard time. He's so in control and being this tough guy and saying and that he's going to take me to the uh, the veil and he's going to get money. And he said, I don't care about you. I just want my money. Then all of a sudden, this that happened and Arya completely loved it. Through, through laughter, she was saying, now what are you going to do? It was fascinating to see this little girl laughing and giggling in the sunlight. Laughing on command is one of the most difficult things to do. And it was so what? weird. No. No, laughing on command is not hard. Um, mm, <laughs> to do naturally, yeah. I mean, watch Cinema Sins. He can't do it. Yeah. Well, do it. I mean, yeah. laughing on command is not hard. Making it sound natural kind of is. Okay, but then the yes. Yeah, so it's hard then. Nope, it's yeah. not. <laughs> okay, pick, picking up a 600-pound ba barbell is not hard. But actually, sorry, is, but actually lifting it is. Okay. No, you you're missing my meaning. Okay, maybe people, yeah. can, people can force laughter on command. Yeah. This that is It's true. making it sound as if it's natural is the right. hard part. That's what, well that's what she's so, describing, how hard it is to laugh naturally on command. I feel and like that's and it's her and it's her saying it about herself. So I think that's fair. So Yeah, that's, that's that, fair. Right? Yeah. It, I think so, it's implied there. Yeah. And it's it's a difficult thing. It's so weird to be able to laugh and joke around on set and not be told off about it. Okay. Another weird revealing scene was when Arya sits up the Hound's Moon and Clay and Clegane gives some rare insight into his backstory. Some of the dialogue was originally intended for season one scene with Sansa, but the producers decided to cut the speech and give some of it to Lingle Littlefinger due to production trouble. Okay. Uh Time made the monologue better. Uh, McCann delivered his lines with years of lived-in weariness. Weariness and... Yeah. Well, that's not even uh, method acting. That's just him playing the role he was born to play, almost. Yeah, pretty much. Um, 
Oh dear. <laughs> Thank you guys. All hail the oh, champion. She's watching. <laughs> have to turn on your camera. How red are those cheeks? <laughs> oh shit. Okay. So, okay, why so, you better be careful. So, instead of so instead of talking to a stranger McCann was opening the the hound was opening up to a young woman that he perhaps loved in his own way. So, mm -hmm. Brian Cogman, the hound snuck up on you as a major character even though you've heard other yeah. people talking about his origin story. Right. Um <laughs> Uh, just to hear him talk about it and give voice to it four seasons in, there was a vulnerability either that he allowed himself to do for Arya. The whole monologue ends with the line, you think you're on your own, and it's the most vulnerable we've ever mm -hmm. seen him out of this context. The line doesn't mean much, but it was one of the most simple, beautiful bits of dialogue that I don't think David and Dan get enough credit for as writers. A yeah. lot of the imitators of Game of Thrones try to do fantasy talk, David and Dan... In David and Dad's best episodes, there was a beautiful simplicity to their dialogue. Fair sure. enough, but they also had a team of writing staff. Uh, they I actually, would say they're closer they to the creative director. But, uh, well, actually, Game of Thrones is unique in that it did not have a writer's, writer's room. Really? It was just them at a That's pair of computers. Like, they admitted this in, uh, I believe it was their... Um, uh season i think it was like their um like austin film fest they said we didn't have a writer's room now keep in mind they're narcissists so they could have had a ghost writer's room uh, well it's kind of just factual that there was just four guys writing the last four episodes hmm. <laughs> the, la the last four episodes i feel like there was oh, no one writing the last four episodes yeah, true. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm, I'm talking about season one through four, the actual oh, good shit. E even then, there wasn't really a writer's room. It was just those two well, guys. Well, I, I yes, there. I'm saying that that's very possible. However, it's it's also entirely possible that they had a ghost writing room. True. Yeah, it was just like yeah. I think like they described the way they described it is like they would like be passing notes back and forth to each other about like the show. Oh, I think it's like. It's like they were they were acting as if they were passing notes in class and getting away with it. Yeah. Is how they were acting, I wanna say. Yeah. Now uh Mer Meredith says that uh they basically lifted almost all of the first four seasons out of the book, which is how they potentially got away with uh being garbage writers and still writing an excellent show. I feel like And then they threw out the next couple of books. Well, they there's, there, yeah, I they there's enough them. structure that they don't understand to justify that, no, there were people who knew what they were doing behind okay. the scenes. Um, what did I miss? Yes. Uh, no, no, nothing much. It's <laughs> um, what a, okay, now that's Nihilium. I love how Wolf is currently muted as you laugh about our current conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what conversation is that? You'll have to scroll up and see, I think. Yeah. Now, because a champion for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking we, we, we about how talk. you can laugh on command. It's just really, really hard to make it sound like a, it's a natural laugh. <laughs> yeah. um, that was hard to laugh on command. But yeah, I would say that the, it's not entirely unlikely that they had a group of writers that they just refused to acknowledge exist um, who are paid to keep silent. I know, like, they kind of forced out a lot of the writers, at least, like, uh, Austin Film Fest, because, like, they said, like, kind of, in, like, unintentionally hazy by saying, hey, like, even, like, writers who weren't on the episode would be at, like, night shoots, and they, and finally they were eventually be like, no, we're not doing this. This is stupid. But, hmm. Yeah, it's... Um, so okay, so Arya season four's road road trip concluded with Brienne catching up to her and fighting the Hound. Oh god, that fight was stupid. It kind of was a little bit, yeah. Um, a little, and, yeah. It was More like a lot. Kind of, so uh, Brienne I'm and the Hound both believed. Yeah. So Arya and the Hound both believed 
that uh, Brienne and the Hound both believe that they're protecting Arya from the other. It was fought in Iceland, and it pushed uh, both the actors to their limit. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie, uh, she trained for about, I trained for six weeks. It was one of the freaking fracking hardest scenes in I've ever done in my life. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, my uh, fighting up hills, down hills, rolls, fighting on rock, uh, on rock face with a sheer downward drop. Yeah. Up. Um, my hands were like a tramp's feet, swollen. In interesting analogy. Um, yeah, a tramp's feet. That's actually really funny. Um, yeah, it was. Rory is an amazing actor and a very strong man, but that was a challenge not just to the actors as characters, but as actors, but, but as characters. Yeah, that that makes sense to me because, like, Rory McCann. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, that scene was bad. Was on, on the stream to talk about stupid scene. It's an MMA yeah, fighter, the, right? Yeah, and go. Was... Yeah, go. Feel free to rant about how much you hate that moment. No, I'm I'm diverting too much. We must re relinquish this to a different. Well, I guess I'm already diverting. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, we have bad. to break it down scene by scene. That I will do that later, sir. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. So okay. I so in my trip. chair, taking a sip from my black Santa tea. And, <laughs> and sitting up straight that is how upset i am sir yeah so you kick okay so uh the idea is that we it would devolve into a street fight and according to the director uh, nope. Graves, um and be the ugliest fight we'd ever had on the show yep oh my gosh i, I don't know all all the fights with the uh like all the actual battles are pretty fucking ugly where everyone squares off and in individual things with fucking swords. Um, yeah. I feel like true. those are way uglier. And the fire. Lost the Kingdom fire. did it better. Yeah, I'm sorry. Kingdom last did Kingdom did it better. On the topic uh, of the Last Kingdom, just finished the fourth season. Isn't Last yeah. Kingdom the one with the. It's about the Norse versus the. Uh, Saxons. The Saxons, yeah. yes. If I'm remembering correctly, the. Battle scenes in that are also stupid. Uh, it's, it's no, they're crazy. actually much better. Is that the one where? Let me Google Last Kingdom. Hang on here. I, I, I think you're talking about Vikings. No, I don't think I am. King. Right. Who's the main actor? Yeah, this one is stupid. Yeah. The one where they form a shield wall by stacking three layers of shields on top of each other. What's stupid about that? Um, because no one is firing projectiles and they have no room to actually put their spears through it. They don't use spears, they use swords. That's also stupid. That makes it more stupid, not less let's, stupid. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, so, okay, so Alex Grace, he'd watch rehearsals and say, <laughs> You were warned, what? what? I mean, later on, they do fix that shield wall issue and it's more formal. Like, um, later on, they do fix that shield wall issue. So, okay. So, what if he kicks her in the groin? What if, and what if she bites her his ear off? Why not just bite, it, I, I it off and lock eyes with him and spit it out so she, he'd see it. Gwen burst out laughing and couldn't wait to do it. But this feels like edgy teenager talk. It does, and the teenagers laughing and saying, "Yeah, let's do it," are teenagers and they get the humor but the, 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 uh, yeah it's really it's this it's show kind of deserve better beat writers yeah, yeah they do these people are so nice yeah yeah there's a lot of nice people on the show just to think so, what they could have done like uh, I, I keep always bringing like that one scene with young griff and Tyrion in the boat but just to see that swamp and like everything that was described in the book yeah, it would be and great. The turtles and oh, the turtles. We missed all that. Yeah, that would be great. The giant turtles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that sounds badass. Is that actually in Game of Thrones? Uh, yeah, and the, and the Game. Vikings and Lions are not great, but the overall writing is amazing. I need to rewatch both of them. It's Ooh. the uh, it's the uh, books, uh, and they go through instead of Valyria, 
that that's stupid in the yes. TV show. It's uh, like well, I, I forgot what the city called, but it's like a half sunken city they they uh, travel oh, yeah. through. It's you you can tell me later. You can tell me later. I don't want to divert too much, but yeah, tell me about like how Valyrian actually fell. I thought it was supposed to be like volcanic ash, but don't that's, don't, that's debated. Don't, don't tangent. Know. I know it's complicated. It's, it's a mystery. Let's get back to the it's thing. It's a mystery. Yes. It's a mystery box. Oh, no. It's a mystery box. No. No JJ references here, Mr. Dunn. Bad. Yes, Don't please. Spray with water. Mr. Let's we do use not talk. the cake analogy instead. We do not use, we don't talk about Jar Jar Abrams. It's <laughs> <laughs> not Darth Sidious. Yeah. So, Jar Jar is actually the Sith Lord. So, Dan Weiss, that's a theory that can be. Uh, I know. Oh no, hang on. I was I was finished yet. Um, that's a theory that can be proven right. The reason why he never got through went through with it was because um the backlash of Jar Jar. God damn you! No, I was making an offhanded joke. Do not tangent off of me. This is not my fault. Yeah, we'll talk about Jar Jar another time. I honestly just do not care about Jar Jar. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 a lot of people hate him. Anomaly Inc. finds him funny. I do neither. I just kind of. He exists. And I don't have any any reaction to him. I just ignore him. Yeah. It's ruined. Yeah. It's Jar Jar Abrams exists. Okay, Done? When was the last time you read Diet Blog? Oh, <laughs> Enough. Let's get back on topic, please. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah please, so, please, please. So, so Dan Weiss, they're two people who, by uh, the time we I got them together, the over there. God damn it, Weiss. Yeah. So, hey. Okay. So. Okay. So another tangent. Oh no. No, 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 I'm fucking with you. No wonder the stream's almost three hours long. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Let's let's keep going. Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, so you, by the time you get the two of them, I.e. Brienne and the Hound together, it's hmm. you're rooting for both of them. Brienne is more of a moral character mm -hmm. um, than the Hound, but Maybe. I would hope that you can help but love the Hound in spite of yourself. Yeah, I, 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 Debatable uh, that she's more moral. Uh, I, I I think she is to a certain she, extent. She's more traditionally moral, but she doesn't understand her morals. Yeah, true. True. She's kind of... Uh, no, uh, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Let's keep going. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Brian, uh, I would... So, where you... Here you get Achilles fighter fighting Hector. There's mm -hmm. a, there isn't a good guy or bad guy. Mm -hmm. Bad guy, it's just, I, there's, two, it's two people you're extremely invested in, invested in, um, and there's fascination and horror knowing one of them is going to inevitably get the worst of the situation. So, uh, Gwendolyn Interesting had, phrasing considering that he should have died but came back. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. So Gwendolyn, uh, I like to be real. Um, I might, I, I, my, Marie and I might not be killing each other, but we're both making contact with those swords. Oh no! Oh dear! Um, we're we're quite serious about it. We were two people who were um, trying, really, that really made a go oh at it for in that situation. They wanted contact, rolling around with the rock. On a, on, in the dirt and a rock face and with your hand bleeding. You're in pain and blood is pouring out of your mouth and you're fall, falling over. <sighs> over because that's what you're, when you're, you're not meant to. You're on top of the mountain with this surreal landscape. Your adrenaline is pumping and you're, you've got what looks like blood everywhere and you're in pain and you're li hitting the living daylights out of each other. There's a lot of repeats in that sentence, but okay. <laughs> Oh dear! You really, you really just expect this guy to get grammar right after all we've been through so far? Well, no, no I don't. Not really. 
it's not even that he's getting his grammar wrong. It's just the fact that like it's just the repeats of the. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I mean. I got my I got my words mixed yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Alex grades when she the way she wins is by losing her mind and going totally psychotic. Yeah, that's. Boo. Boo! Okay. Jeez, lay off the beans. I will leave this for another stream or to the end of this stream or something. I will not do this. <laughs> I will not do this to you. Yeah. Yeah, just just welcome to the insanity that is this book. I will live it at spit take. That's where I'm at. Which Brian, um yeah, she wouldn't really do that. Yeah, that's a well yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a tough situation to kind of discuss, to say the least. <sighs> yeah. So, okay, so you're genuinely scared, uh, according to Gwendolyn Christie, you're generally scared because when you look into uh, Roy McCann's eye, or his, his eyes, and they mean it, it's fr it was frightening. Uh, it was one of the few times where I've had not to do acting. I was screaming, screw you, come on. Blood was everywhere, it was in going insane. It was freaking mental. I lost it in points, it would just go in screaming. All righty. That will be the end. That'll be the end of this uh, this week's reading. Um, um, we're now okay. now at chapter fourteen, um, and we're oh wow, this one's going to be long. Oh great! Yeah, that answers my question. I was going to say done. I was going to say done. Would you like the explanation of why that fight is absolutely terrible? Wait, at what's, the end what's of this the stream or at the beginning of the next one? What's the next chapter on? The Purple Wedding. Oh, okay. The Purple Wedding? Oh, Joffrey There's dies. Joffrey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the reason yeah. why it's called the Purple Wedding because yeah. he turned. We're, purple. we're at around chapter. We're near se uh, ep not season. Season four. There we go. Done. Yes, we're finally almost going to get to the good stuff. Done, really you dumb, must uh, give me an EFAP of that scene. That is uh, the worst fight scene I've ever seen. Why don't I give, uh, him, why don't I give it to him now? Season eight. Yeah. Allow me to introduce myself. You have done. Actually, why not let why not let him talk about it here? No. Yeah, well, it's already the long. We're already long. We'll we'll do that we'll do that another time. Um, we are not. The we'll long. We'll, we'll, we'll have, have, have to do we'll have to do that uh, in a couple weeks. A couple Plus of it weeks. Will build anticipation. Time. Yep. Get hyped for C for episode nine. All right. Yeah. Hyped for the, the worst anime fight you've seen in your goddamn <laughs> life. Admission, admission ticket, tickets as twenty people as twenty a pop with five for children. Welcome to uh, episode nine: the rise of the no children of cost the extra. Fight scene. What? Children cost extra. Oh wait, sorry, yeah. sorry, I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> with children, I'm sorry, uh, children, uh, but it's also plus extra twenty dollars if you have a child with you. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make we need to get done money. We need to get done money somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done with this. Done. I'm gonna buy your book. That's gonna be. Yeah, I'm gonna buy your book. Thank you. Much Re recommend. No, recommend. We just not last nine um, more minutes. We Dragon can, Lord we... Annals or Prince of Winter, I think, would be the best. Would be the right. ideal okay. one. Okay. Gotcha. I'll buy the series. Thank you. Prince of Winter is only only one so far, so. Sir, you should know by now that I do not read read or watch things until they are complete. Well, it's just it's uh, a standalone story that. Ah, right. uh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, sorry. Also, um, fifteen if you also include the prequel. Overall, this comes at a total of fifty-five dollars. Doesn't have bad CGI. On oh, the. No. What can you do? Alrighty. Well. Oh, wait, never mind. He was referring I, to the books. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. Jesus. Was, oh, oh, read, oh, oh, wheel of book time. Like, yeah, me. wheel of time. Yeah, wheel of time. Food drinks really can be covered long. for an extra. Food drinks will be covered for an extra 40 bucks. Not the blue milk. Wait. Don, you got to pay No, me. it's, it's I, the green it, milk you don't I want. Do it. it should be in the description. Gotcha. I'll, I'll pop you like five dollars a month. That's a, that sounds reasonable because I like you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, Sorry, I, I didn't mean to pop your ego. You're okay. 
Huh? Yeah, I'm, I, I know. I'm well. <laughs> I, no, I'm. I'm, a, I'm. I fully admit to being a terrible per person who tries his best not to be. He's, he's a four thousand blood old vampire. He's pretty much had enough of his ego at this point. <laughs> yeah. Oh to, come on! He needs to die on his blood. Mm-hmm. Oh come on! Why is it a? Uh, why does it keep doing that? Maybe it's just I need to just keep, like, putting it up. I don't know. Just look up um, B Malachi Don on Patreon, and you'll find me. Post it in in the type it in the chat. Yeah. And you've got two hundred and forty-two subscribers now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Two hundred forty-two. We're getting closer. <laughs> Hang on, can I call it Wise Wolf? Wise Wolf? Huh? What did you mean when you said, did you say, that's even worse? Are I mean, saying, I mean, I mean we're, we're talking about the uh, moral race being on Amazon. Are you saying that I spoke like a moron? or that? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, no, no. I mean, no, 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 I mean, when you were talking about the Amazon Lord of the Rings, when he said, no, it's on the Amazon, we, and I said, that's even worse. Oh, wow, that's way back. Um, yes, that is even worse. Yeah, that's why I, I knew it, because we both said it at the same time. Oh, okay. I said you were agreeing with me. I thought you were debating me. No, I was agreeing with you. Okay, good. I it's mean, like, the Netflix one will be great because there's more gay sex, but um, oh my uh, God. the production quality uh, will be worse. How dare all of you? We want the most gay sex possible. Have you seen 13 Reasons, Reasons Why? Uh, no. There are more gay relationships no. than there are straight relationships. It's literally like Six to one. How do they stay it, populated? And it's amazing, you racists. You're supposed to say homophobe. You'll be yeah, fine. So you're a racist. But, um, no, that's six to one. All righty. All righty. All righty. Enough, people. All right, Enough. now. And, uh, done. Let's... Done. You don't realize we can make this over three hours. Uh, yeah. think... okay, how about I a short Q&A I'm... then? It's a milestone. Q and A. Do it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Embrace the long. <laughs> I'm sorry. Three hours is not long. No, Embrace it's not. Long it's yeah, it's long. Okay, it's like when you see something that's like two ninety nine. Like, oh, that's two dollars. But when you see something that's three dollars, you're like, oh, that's three ninety nine. Done. No, you can do it. There's not. three minutes left. You nope. can do this. I believe in you. Okay, no. Well, it's not the milestone, but you might as well do it. Come on. For, it's not that. No. It's like a thing. We're, we're almost there, dude. Just leave a blank screen for three minutes. I believe okay. in you. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look. See if there are any new memes. Done. Yeah. How do you we feel touch. about... Done. How do you feel about... You haven't about done memes in forever. Yeah. <laughs> There, there are a whole well, lot of new memes to cover. How do you feel about Ryan Johnson, Dunn? Why don't you tell me? There was a meme. Oh, there was a God. meme. Neff, I, why don't you tell me about the chat? How you feel about Ryan Johnson? I feel yeah. that I feel that Ryan Johnson is horrifically <laughs> overrated. Okay, yeah, um, expand upon that. I don't know what overrated means. Why don't you tell me more about that? Actually, he, a lot of people say that he's this, a lot of people say that he's this genius auteur who like is able to do these amazing things. But the problem is. Mr. Johnson just basically relies on the same bag of tricks throughout the entirety of his work. It just never, ever changes. He just keeps going and going and going, doing the stuff, doing, like, just random, incoherent, juvenile stuff. And, like, it's couched in under the guise of progressiveness in a lot of ways, but it's just frustrating, to say the least, because he's just not, like, that... Co-care and a writer. I'm done. Neff, why don't you tell me your opinion? I just don't like. I have. I just like fine. I just have nothing but contempt for Ryan Johnson. To be perfectly honest. Same so, here. I yeah, just, have nothing but contempt for us. Contempt. So, contempt and hate. Yeah, I have contempt. Um, hey, done. Yeah. Should I cover the memes? Yeah, let's do that. All right, then. Yeah. Okay, I'm screen sharing it. All righty. Okay, top meme of the week is... It's me. Uh, well, yeah. obviously. Okay. There, there we go. Uh, 
It's lame, but I just pop, I just popped up on the spot. I, I'm looking at something. I, I'm, I'm throwing shit at, at the fucking stream. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I love, here it uh, is. Okay. This is the beginning. I gotta make this long time. I gotta make this this last. This is meme number one. <laughs> I, I'll I, I, text I, I, you I, until I, you're ready. I'll keep you warm until you're ready. Ten, okay, meme. <laughs> I'll carry you Next until you're ready. Meme. Fly, bitch. Ubisoft in 2000, in 2007 removed the crossbow to maintain true historical accuracy. Ubisoft in 2020, you can ride a wolf. A dire wolf. I feel like the more like. offensive thing is that he has a back scabbard. It's Imperial Walkers. You look beautiful, beautiful, Queen. Absolutely stunning. Almost for feet picks. She's not that bad. <laughs> and we're only coming from you, Wolf. <laughs> is that Miguel? Because the whole symptom you have with Dr. Crow. You know why? Can we not? Hey, start? I like crow. You? How dare you? I, I'd say it. that was nihilist. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> and then, of course, we pretty much agree to kill that meme. Don't know what this is about. That is a 2012 meme, sir. Up your meme game. What about what about dragons? I kind of forgot about those. <laughs> Fuck dragons! How dare you? We're here for some fun time. God damn you guys, right? these are 2012 memes. Up your meme game. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm searching for a fuck to give. <laughs> Bikera. The Bikera. You're trying to try to call them off, Nelius? That's my immediate reaction. The single truly stupid haters kept alive. <laughs> okay. Now we're back to 2016. Very good, Nelius. You know, I'm something of a hip youth myself. This exec. How dare you, sir? You, you could have done the, uh, what is his fucking name? How is it going, fellow kids? It's that, that was the one that my friend of mine sent me, and I had to share because it, it was most relevant. <laughs> yeah. Your okay. onion night, my onion night. This is 2022. Amazing. I love you. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, I failure. <laughs> <laughs> Kill chicken. Go to jail. Kill chicken. Get killed by chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 2025. Amazing, sir. We love you. Depart, you walk through our seven foot with dragonborn paladin intimidating people throwing things from the favorite services and swearing. Can you actually make a dragonborn paladin? <laughs> yeah, you can make anything a paladin, provided it isn't evil. No. Well, a pal yeah, a paladin. I don't know. Maybe that's true. Uh, I remember the class system, at least in uh, 3.5, and uh, what does that say? I am dressed up as a Game of Thrones writer. You could tell due to the complete lack of ether and plants of fishing is gone. <laughs> My reaction was amazing. Yeah. There's so yeah. much yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm stuck in 3.5, but I feel like 3.5 and maybe 5.0 do not support uh, <laughs> class and race mixing very well. So if you're saying dragonborns can be whatever they want, I don't know. Or say <laughs> Paladin can be anything. I don't know. Me, I don't know. You're going to have to look into that yourself. I'm not a freaking DD expert. Show the next one. All right, there's too much effort to make it eligible. Show the next one. Well, am, I, am I not right when I say there's still too much effort put into the costume? I don't even have a note. Next one. Hey, print it on white paper. It should have been black <laughs> on black. <laughs> That's like, he made them angry. He has angered the almighty ones. He has oh, committed a great sin. Kill chicken and scare him, you better be running. Wolf went picking up on the story. I killed him over twice and he was a flushed him out with the power of my mind. Wolf went riding it. Word count is intimidating. <laughs> well, it kind of is. You kind of forgot there was a costume. I think this goes for all of us. Who thought should have done more shrines? It <laughs> 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 should have. It's just wonderful because that is the right uh, stamina wheel. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you know, the Britannic had the uh, anti grav lifts that you know. Uh, maybe. Oh, um, this is a very Sir, long one. What is this black border? This is fucking 2010. Up your meme game, sir. Or ma'am. <laughs> Rolling a two for stealth. Rolling a one for perception. <laughs> that is fantastic. I don't normally go for the D and D memes, but I love that. 
Yeah, that's yes. funny. When your friend asks what scene of the last show you want to watch, credits will do fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do a yeah, quick intermission? Basically. Can I do a quick intermission? Anyone here a uh, DM? GM? I'm planning on being a DM for a Warhammer Fantasy campaign. Oh, interesting. You'll have to tell me how that goes. I do not know that system very well. Um, uh, uh, here's my, what is your opinion on how to respond to low perception rules? My opinion? Yes, sir. I would okay, love to. Um, I, I'm actually going to take notes because I really want to improve my own well, system. Um, that's, actually, that's actually for you to develop your own style, but if I were to do it, I just have it su be super stupidly hilarious because I just want to be I want to be a kind of DM that just has fun torturing the players when they do good roles, but then also ha also trying to make them laugh when they do really good roles, and then making them suffer for doing really bad. Yeah, yeah now see, you're a Warhammer guy, my, uh, so I know that that's all about like the exaggerations. <laughs> Mine is a hyper realistic one. So how I run it when I do my testing is it's always like when someone rolls bad perception, it's not called perception in mine. Um, but uh, when someone rolls bad perception, I say, eh. It's like, okay. They're like, I, I, I would like to know what's, uh, what's going on in this room or whatever. Say, say like uh, their approach, they're in a room where, um, where they're, like there's potential bad guys or whatever. And say, I roll to see if there's like a dude up on the rafters or if there's someone in a place I don't know. And you roll like a five and it requires a 15. I'm like, eh. Like <laughs> I, I don't even say you don't perceive anything. I don't give that whole like, ooh, well, maybe there is. I say, eh. <laughs> All right. Uh, right now, we're on the Instagram one. A friend of mine shared this with me. The perfect drink doesn't exist. Mountain Dew it. Good enough to make you see through the lies of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Physics exists. Cats. Meow. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's basically oh, cats on the furniture. Wait, no, 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 no. Hold it, hold it for like ten seconds. Uh, this will make my girlfriend guffaw. Do this. Okay. Um. This one. Doctor, I fixed your broken arm. Here's your bill. My car declined. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a picture of um baby yoda yeah apparently this is actually legally true <laughs> it just works yeah a guy died and the doctor sued his estate because he didn't pay for his surgery oh you told me about that one it's hilarious yeah yeah that one's great kids watching kids watching their mom kiss a dude they don't like hashtag game of thrones peter tran <laughs> <laughs> That's actually legit hilarious. You be queen for a time. It comes another younger, more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you make great adaptation, me. Sir, we've already made it three hours. <laughs> <laughs> hours. I never taught you how to write your own story. That's why you're so bad at it. <laughs> That's actually legit funny. Jamie, next episode. Whoa. John, my name is Brian. This bad boy gives so many fucking knives to him. <laughs> Wait. You, well, dang, I forgot about the art. <laughs> you don't have time for all this. The Night King has your dragon. He's one of them now. The walls fall. The dead marks south. Five minutes later, a whole new world. <laughs> and that's all the memes. Oh, wait, no, nope, there's one. one more. Dragons, I have woken him. Finally, some work for me. <laughs> I challenge you, Dragonborn. You will not survive me. The Night King. Hey, he's a generic fantasy fighter. He can, he's easily dodgeable. Yeah, hey, but we can make it to four hours. No. no. <laughs> I have somewhere to be. That. Thank we'll you. No, they'll only... just tell, easily telegraph their, their moves, and I'll be able to we dodge have... them. Okay, we have only surpassed the four-hour limit mark one, a couple okay, of times. Okay, one more me from Nihilus. Oh, really? You have? I was trying to get you to a yes, milestone. Yeah. Oh, we've got okay. to six hours. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, but I need to talk one more meme. Just one more. Just one. Just the one. 
I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I took an arrow to the heart. There, that's all the mains. We're done. No, dude, my guy, you're in 2013. Hey, too bad. <laughs> yeah, suck it up. 2011. Just because you bought Skyrim for the 30th time this year does not mean... <laughs> what are you talking about? Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft bought, purchased Skyrim for the biggest amount of money ever. Oh, God, done. Now you're making me want to talk about arrows in fantasy, particularly Game of Thrones. We'll get to it another time. Why are you doing this to me? Yeah. I'm not doing this. I didn't hear you see. You're doing this to yourself. <laughs> no, this is a natural reaction that occurs within my horrible, horrible broken heart. Yeah, let's uh let's call it good there. Thank you everybody for coming <laughs> and we'll we'll say bye. Oh! Holy shit. Okay, we're we're going. Go!